All right, I think I've got everything working. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Judge Lal, and we will begin with our state all-purpose calendar for today, March 26, uh, 2024 at 9 a.m. Uh, this is misdemeanor cases in which have already been accused. Make sure that the... Oh, am I the wrong calendar? Okay, sorry. Hang on. How you doing, Judge Law? Good morning. Uh, is this state all purpose? This yes, ma'am, Judge. You're oh. on the correct calendar. Correct oh. calendar, Your Honor. Okay, just one second, please. Sorry about that. They thought I was supposed to be on another calendar. Oh, All right. Uh, yes. Good morning, our Deputy. Uh, yes. Um, this is our state all-purpose calendar for today, March 26. And um, these are a list of misdemeanor cases in which individuals have already been accused and uh, bonds have already been set. Today, we're going to determine the status of the cases to see whether they're going to move forward with regards to uh, considering a plea, accepting a plea from the prosecution, or whether they would like to enter a not guilty and have the case scheduled for trial. Uh, other matters that we will also address are probation revocations as well as bond hearings. If you are a defendant charged with one or more misdemeanor offenses, please remember that you have a right to remain silent Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to represent you. For individuals who are appearing uh, via Zoom who are not, uh, not an attorney, if you are a witness or a victim or an interested party, uh, please mute your Zoom and stop your video. You may turn them on when you hear your particular case called. All right. Otherwise, the only folks whose video should be on are the attorneys and the litigants. Excuse me. And the courtroom. All right. Thank you. Sorry. All right. Deputy Officer Norris, uh, let's begin. Ms. Vigiletti, um, who would you like to address first? May we actually start with a quick question? There are a few people on the officer's poll sheet today that I do not have on my calendar. And I'm wondering if maybe the litigation manager can, can help us understand if these folks need to be here this morning. Uh, can you put a list of the position numbers that you've, that you've got on your calendar of individuals who are not present mm -hmm. and put them in the chat to Ms. Strong and maybe you can get the information back. So we actually have folks that are present that are not on my calendar. Oh, I see. Yeah, so I'm wondering, did I miss a calendar or did, or are there people here who don't need to be? I've got the March 26 calendar printed up. Um, Great. Okay, so like I said, get a tally of the people who you okay. feel are not on the calendar or should be on the calendar. Okay. So you can do that in the chat. Yeah, and I like to start with the folks who are on the calendar great. and who are in the courtroom. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay, we're going to go and search. Um, white. And there's some violent questions. I'm sure we do need to talk briefly. Yeah. Okay. 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 Your Honor, we could start with position 42 on the state all purpose calendar. Watch okay. that. Sounds good. Thank you. This is State versus Don Watts, 17 CR 15979 B. Mr. Watts had been accused of false report of a crime back in October 14th, 2015. And um 
Mr. Watts, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Ms. Vigiletti. Ms. Vigiletti, this is going to be a plea? Uh, yes, Judge. All right. Mr. Watts, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do. Thank you, sir. All right, Mr. Rhodes, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing, Judge? I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. Um, may we have the state's recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. The state is recommending a time served rec recommendation. Uh, I believe he's already served 16 days, so he could credit for time served for the 16 oh. days. Well, I think it's uh, time served 16 days, uh, credit for time served eight days. So eight days. two for one, he's balance suspended, correct? Yes. Okay. And I think it's uh, to serve 16 days, credit for time served eight days. Would that be correct, Ms. Vigiletti? Yes, Judge. So yes, it would be time served. And uh, is your client accepting these terms? Yes. And do you stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID? We do for the purposes of the plea. All right. Mr. Watts, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol recently? Yesterday, I had some pills. All right. And oh, no, even. No. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Could you repeat? Oh, no. Back pain. He's, I'm sorry. He's saying Tylenol. Okay. Um, with your medication, are you still able to understand the proceedings? Yes. And are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes. And do you understand that if you plead guilty to this offense, that you will be giving up your constitutional right to challenge the charge in a court of law? You will not have the opportunity to go back to court, have a trial in front of a judge or a jury, to have the assistance of counsel, to confront your accuser, challenge the evidence brought against you, and have the state carry its burden to prove the charge uh, beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes. How do you plead to uh, offense or false report of a crime? Guilty. Your sentence is to serve um, sixteen days. Credit for time served eight days. You have concluded your um, sentence for this case, and it's now closed. Do you understand, sir? Yes. All right. That concludes the case. Yeah, more than the uh, we, we can go next to them. All right, uh, Miss. Position number 47, Bruce William. Okay. Uh, Miss Strong, you've got the names of the three individuals who are in the courtroom but not on the calendar. Could we look into that, please? Thank you. All right. And position 47, you say? Yes, Bruce Williams. Okay. And Ms. Vigiletti, have you resolved the the um the terms of the plea? Not not yet, Judge. Uh Mr. Rose, I did send you, I know the day before SAP is crazy. I did send you a counteroffer. I just resent it so that it should be at the top of your email. Um, all right, I'll make sure and check that. All right, in the meantime, this is State Bruce, State versus Bruce Janelle Williams, case 16 CR 13415E. Mr. Williams was accused of driving without a valid license and obscured a missing license plate. And uh, this was from January 10th, 2015. Mr. Williams, you have been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Ms. Vigiletti. Um, if in the event we do move forward with a plea hearing, may I place you under oath at the present time? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. All right. Please hold on for Mr. Rhodes. For some reason, the email hadn't come through yet, but if you... Um, maybe I have your email wrong. I've, I've sent it twice now, yesterday and this morning. Here, let me try again, forwarding this to you. We can also... This I is see. A... No, I see it. There it is. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, can you
Uh, yeah, I think that that's that's uh, I think we can negotiate based on those terms. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Okay, so what other terms, Mr. Rhodes? So, so I believe what the what the uh, defense is asking for is for and correct me if I'm wrong because I zoomed through it, but instead of a probated sentence, a suspended sentence after all of the conditions are completed. All right, uh, the state doesn't have any objections to that. So as, as it relates to count one, Your Honor, we're asking for uh, 12 months uh, probation to serve uh, 16 days. I have here that he does have credit for time served of eight of those days already. And then a $500 fine, uh, the $500 fine would terminate probation upon payment of the fine. And for count two, I have an obscured and missing license plate, 12 months probation to run concurrent with count one, a $135 fine, which would terminate upon uh, upon payment of the actual fine. So I believe that the recommendation is that probation would terminate once these fines are paid. Am I am I correct? Yeah. And so what we're so Mr. Williams doesn't live here. He lives in Florida. And so the concern about being put on probation until he pays the fines is he would technically have to stay here. And he he works in the oil field in Florida, and that's how he would pay the fine. So we're proposing balance suspended and payment of fine within the next 30 to 60 days. Uh, and, you know, if he doesn't, it, he's going to pay the fines, but if, if he doesn't, then then issue the warrant and you know put him put him on probation or or you know reopen the case but just because he doesn't live here we can't responsibly put him on probation until he pays the fine so that's that's that was the only request is could we do a balance suspended so he can get to florida pay those fines with his first paycheck in florida i could do will he be leaving right away yes judge he won't be able to stay till next thursday he, so he doesn't he doesn't live here. He actually got pulled over in the process of moving from Colorado to Florida for a new job. I see. Okay. Yeah. So I can do a telephonic reporting. I'll waive the fees for the first month, which what this is so being waived for March and April. And he has till the end of April to pay the fines. And uh, he'll do telephonic reporting until the fines are paid off. Okay, so technically on probation, it's okay to call in. There will be no probation fees. As soon as those fines are paid, we're done. No probation fees for the months of April, March and April. Right. So if he, if he gets, gets to Florida, pays those fines, everything's over. If he pays those fines by the end of April. Okay. Well, Otherwise, he will continue to report by telephone and start paying probation fees from May 1st onwards. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I just I just need to explain really quick. Go ahead, mute your screen. Okay. My goodness. All right, have you made a decision? Yes, Judge. Mr. Williams just wants to make extra sure he's not going to be doing anything wrong by leaving the state. So I think everything they said sounds good and, and we're ready to move forward. 
as long as he has a valid driver's license, adequate insurance, and proper registration for his mode of transportation, I'm sure he should be all right. Okay, great. Thank you. Are we moving forward? Yes, Judge. All right. Um, and Ms. Uh, Vigiletti, do you stipulate to the factual basis venue and ID? We do for the purposes of the plea. All right. Mr. Williams, have you consumed any alcohol or medicine recently? No. And have you understood the proceedings so far? Yes. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes. And has anyone forced you, induced you to take this plea offer today? No. If you decide to accept this plea offer, you will be giving up your constitutional right to a trial. You will not have the assistance of counsel to confront your accuser in a trial before a judge or a jury, to be able to challenge the evidence brought against you, to have the ability to present any defenses of argument or arguments, and have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes. How do you prove, uh, excuse me, how do you plead? one count of driving without a valid license and operating a vehicle with an obscured or missing license plate. Guilty. <sighs> Problem. Is he planning to drive or be driven? Am I planning to drive? To drive? Yeah, yeah. I'm planning to drive. Oh. Driving without a valid license. Please check and see, Miss uh, Vigiletti. I think that triggers a license suspension. Oh, does it? Uh, We're, we want to make sure that driving with a, without a valid license pleading to it doesn't trigger a license suspension. Oh. All right. We will take this case up next um, after the next case. Please go ahead and sit in the same gallery again, sir. Oh, it is. All right, we're just going to put a pin on that. Next case. Um, Mr. Rhodes, um, I'm just putting this out to the state. If you want to amend the driving without a valid license to no license on person, that will not trigger a suspension. And considering the age of the case, I think the outcome would be the same. I'm totally fine with that, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. So we would have to amend the charge from driving without a valid license to no license on person. That will not trigger a suspension. And um, Ms. Strong, uh, what would you need from the state in order to amend that accusation? Ms. Casey Strong? Judge, they would oh. need to file, good morning, they would need to file down an amended charge for that um, charge. Okay. An All amended, right. I'm sorry, amended accusation for that charge. Okay. All Would right, Mr. Brown, uh, I'm sorry to give you the homework by simply just uh, filing an amended accusation to uh, reflect and to null process the uh, driving without a valid license. It's a technicality, but it'll avoid the suspension. All right, we're working on that now, Judge. Okay, appreciate it. All right, Ms. Vigiletti, who do we have next, please? Well, in light of that, should we finish with Mr. Williams? No, because you got to wait for the accusation. Oh, I, okay. Oh, okay. We'll take up Mr. Williams next after this one. Sounds good. Thank you. This is position number 22, Wilbert Moore. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning, Ms. McLean. How are you, sir? Glad to be here after all that rain and uh, mess out there. Well, as long as your shoes don't have soggy bottoms, we are good to go. All right. They, so. don't. they don't. I think that's a song from uh, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, isn't it? Careful, you're dating me. Okay. Who's your client? This is Mr. Will Moore, Wilbert. Wilbert, uh, okay. With a B E R T at the end. And. Is he on the probation calendar? I don't have him on the calendar. He's, I believe he's number 22. 22. On the main calendar. Okay. Oh, sorry. Wilbert Moore, is that correct? Yes. Okay. And we're going to wave sounding. Mr. Rhodes, will you be um, 
addressing this matter? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So this is going to be a negotiated plea. Let me just check one thing. All right. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, my uh, practice is to waive sounding on the nature of these charges. So we're just going to refer to them as the misdemeanor charges. Uh, yes. This is Wilbert Goodman Moore, case number 24CR 1268D. Mr. Moore, um, you are been, you have been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Mr. Michael McLean. Has Mr. McLean shown you the two charges of which you've been accused? Okay. And uh, we are going to proceed with a plea hearing with regard to these particular this particular case. Please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, Mr. Um, Rhodes, I believe you have a recommended offer for Mr. Moore on count. Count two is going to merge with count one. So we're only going to address count one. Yes, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. As it relates to count one, the recommendation from the state is a 12-month sentence to serve 162 days. I'm showing that he has, uh, he will receive credit for 81 of those days. All right. So that for double 81, he would have completed his jail time then. Absolutely. Okay. Balance will be on probation. The state is asking for a stay away from 550 Peachtree Street, Northeast in Atlanta, Georgia, unless uh, he's seeking emergency care. Okay. Particular facility. And that there be no further contact with uh, Miss Grace Santa Guida. And I'm, I'm going to spell that because I don't know if I butchered it. Uh, no, you've got it. And it's on the calendar. So we've got the spelling. Okay. And uh, Mr. Rhodes, uh, refresh my memory. I'm not is this a which which uh, hospital is this or healthcare facility? Uh, I believe you are, and that's uh, Emory Midtown, formerly okay. known as Crawford Long. All right, Emory Midtown, got it. Thank you. And as you as you indicated, Your Honor, count two does merge. So thank you, Your Honor. Thank uh, and Mr. Rhodes, I have the um, I have the um, calendar as filled out by Miss Falk. So. Um, She's already pre-filled a lot of the recommendations in there. So actually it's to the benefit of your office that you've given us all this information already. So appreciate it. Thank you. Um, Mr. McLean, does your client accept these terms? He does, Your Honor. Okay. We stipulate to the three necessary elements for the purposes of the plea. Thank you. Mr. Moore, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol recently? Oh, uh, no, ma'am. And have you understood... Uh, everything that's going on in your case so far. Yes, ma'am. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, ma'am, I sure am. And is anybody forcing you to take this plea offer today? No, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty to these to this one charge on count one, you would have to give up your constitutional right to a trial in front of a judge or a jury. You will not have an appointed counsel to assist you with confronting your accuser, challenging the evidence brought before you, presenting any defenses or mitigating factors, and also have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to count one? Yes. Your, your sentence is going to be 12 months to serve 162 days, credit for time served 81 days. Your jail time is concluded. Your The remainder of the time is going to be served on probation. While you are on probation, you are to stay away from the Emory Midtown Hospital at 550 Peachtree Street in Northeast Atlanta. Yeah. You're only allowed back into that hospital if you are seeking emergency treatment or if you have an appointment with a specific physician or healthcare provider. Do you understand? Otherwise, you cannot step into the hospital, its parking lots, its sidewalks, anywhere near it, or you will be arrested for criminal trespass. Understood? Yes, at all times, while you, if you are at the facility, you are to have no contact with Grace Santa Guida. By the way, is Miss Santa Guida on Zoom? All right, she's not. All right, that concludes the plea. Thank you. Deputy <clears throat> uh, Norris, just a quick one with uh, Mr. Uh, Bruce Williams to conclude his case. And uh, Mr. Rhodes, uh, whenever you get a chance to file the amended accusation, 
and null pros the original charge. And that would be helpful. Uh, Otherwise, Miss Strong and Miss Grace will be after you for the rest of the day. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Thomas is working on that as we speak, so I, I, I'll check with him to see if he's concluded it yet. All right, thank you. Okay. Judge, do you, excuse me, before we proceed, Miss Vigiletti, if she's in, I don't, if she could check the chat for courtroom two in reference to the names that she sent me. Yes, ma'am. Can you send, do you see the message? If you could send that information to me in the chat, please, that'd be helpful. Oh, um, oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. No problem. All right. Jail court iPhone will be with you very shortly. Excuse me, Judge, before we yeah. start. Ms. McLeod is on for positions 23 through 27. Mr. Merrick, she says she needs to speak with her clients. Okay. And uh, Ms. McLeod, good morning. May Bye. we have your client's name? Drake Myrick, Your Honor. Drake Myrick. Yes. Um, Officer Norris, is Drake Myrick in courtroom two? I think he said he was upstairs, Your Honor. <laughs> Yes, he does. I just spoke with Officer Norris. Ms. McLeod, I did meet Mr. Myrick before I realized there is a conflict. I'll just email with some of the details of our interview, okay? All right. Okay, uh, awesome. We have medical. Hello, I'm here. Who is that? Who is the individual at medical? Officer, who is the... I'm sorry, your audio is going in and out. Could you tell us who is at medical? Drake Mar. Oh, there we go. All right. Uh, Miss Grace, if we can place medical in a breakout with Miss McLeod, please. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Miss McLeod and medical, you'll see a message on your screen to join a breakout room. Yes. Okay. Mr. McLean, if uh, Ms. Vigiletti could uh, resume with Mr. Williams. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Williams, we're going to resume with the plea hearing on um, 16 CR 13415E. Ms. Vigiletti, uh, the last time we left off with this case, the state has agreed to amend the driving without a valid license to no license on person. And is your have you explained to your client the uh, change in the charge and whether he's still willing to move forward with the plea? Yes, Judge, that is extremely helpful. Thank you for judging that. Okay, so Mr. Williams, um, just to uh, refresh, uh, how do you plead to one count of no license on person and operating a vehicle with an obscured or missing license plate? Guilty. Your sentence on count one is going to be 12 months to serve 16 days, credit for time served eight days, uh, balance probated. You'll be uh, subject to telephonic reporting with probation. Before you leave the state of Georgia, please make sure you get the correct information from probation as to the telephone number that and whom uh, and when you need to call. Okay. Uh, but your first phone call will definitely be no later than next Thursday before three p.m. Next Thursday is going to be April. Excuse me. Next Tuesday. I'm sorry. I forgot today is Tuesday. It's going to be April second. Okay. Before 3 p.m. But before you leave the state, make sure you get the correct phone number from probation. Will do. And um, so telephonic reporting, the for driving with, uh, with no license on person, the fine is $500. Your probation will terminate upon uh, payment, full payment of that fine, as well as any outstanding fees, if any are incurred. For count two, obscure the missing license plate, the sentence is 12 months probation, telephonic reporting, $135 fine to terminate upon full payment of the fine and full payment of any surcharges if you incurred them. Presently, your probation fees shall be waived for the months of March and April. 
So you have till the end of April to pay your uh, fines without any surcharges. Otherwise, if the fines are not paid off, then you will continue telephonic reporting and start paying uh, your probation fees from May 1st, 2024 onwards until your fines are all paid. Do you understand? Yes, I do. All right. Any questions? No, no, no. That concludes your case. Thank you. All right. Ms. Vigiletti, I'm moving on to jail court iPhone. Who do we have there, please? Good morning. We have our position uh, number 18 through 21. Mr. McCormick. Oh. All right. As soon as Ms. Vigiletti is. Uh... That's uh, Mr. McCormick for me, Your Honor. Oh, that's for you? All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, sorry. I had the. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, this is Mr. Brian McCormick. Uh, Mr. McCormick, good morning. My name is Judge Lal, and I'd just like to remind you that you do have quite a few cases before us. Please remember that you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney, and representing you is Mr. Mike McLean. With regards to the cases you have, uh, position 18 is um, case 23CR 2053D, in which you are accused of battery family violence from March 20th, 2023. Your second case is 23CR 2055D, in which you are accused of possession and use of a drug-related object and giving false information to an officer, and that's from April 3rd, 2023. Your other two cases are bench warrants for failure to appear or failure to comply with pretrial, and those case numbers are 24FTA-292 and 24FTA-293. And Mr. McLean, I understand that your client plans to enter a plea of not guilty and further notice the cases for trial. Would that be correct? Uh, correct, Your Honor, yes. All right. And yeah. are you planning to file a waiver of arraignment or would Hold you need to? Yes. Your Honor, Your Honor Yes, Mr. McCormick? Yes, my apologies, Your Honor. Uh, I am in a bad spot here. The reason I told uh, Mr. McLean yesterday that I didn't want to have probation because I understand that the state was ready to uh, release me but put me on probation was because right now I'm homeless and vehicleless. Uh, if I have problems meeting with the probation officer or something, I just don't want something that's going to escalate into more and more problems with me being incarcerated. Um, I am a homeless vet, right? Well, not homeless vet right now. I have a place to go uh, up in Cobb County, but my transportation level is, 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 my transportation is shot right now. I've lost my driver's license and everything else. Um, but at the same time, um, I am in Six South right now, and this is not a good area uh, for myself. Um, I'm looking to actually find out whether or not we can work something out right now that I might be able to go on. I will let your, your attorney has heard this uh, response. I cannot tell the prosecution uh, with regards to what their offer is at the present time. So, Mr. McLean, did you want to continue negotiating with the prosecution at this time? It sounds to me like, Your Honor, uh, that we maybe need to put this towards the end of the calendar so that we can talk further. All right. Mr. Deputy? Yes. Uh, it looks like Mr. McLean will need to talk to his client. Um, is there a way he can be brought to the courtroom or deal with the yes, I, data? Yeah, I, I can bring him down. I appreciate it. Thank you. Do you have another case at this location? Uh, no, that is the only one. All right. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. McLeod, are you ready to proceed with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Myrick was at medical. I'm just waiting for medical to get back on. They're connecting to audio. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. This was Mr. Myrick. And... Medical, uh, may we have the video on too, please?
Miss Grace, could you prompt medical to start their video? All right, um, wait until medical comes on video. In the meantime, courtroom two, do we have another case that's ready? We could do position number one and two, Darren Appling. Okay. Ms. Lusang. There we go. Medical's video is on, but no one's there. So we'll wait for Mr. Myrick to come back. All right, Mr. McLean, are we ready to proceed with Mr. Darren Appling? We do. Uh, we are, Your Honor. We do have Mr. Appling here. All right. Mr. Darren Appling's case is 22CR3582H, accused of loitering and prowling and obstruction of an officer from June 6, 2022. He's got a bench warrant, case 24FTA282. Uh, Mr. Appling, you've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Mr. McLean. May I place you under oath for purposes of the plea? Please wait. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rhodes, this is position uh, one. I understand the state will null cross count two if the plea moves forward. Would that be correct? Yes. All right. And so what's the offer for position one? Yes, this relates to position number one on the loitering and prowling or prowling count, count one. The state is asking for recommending 12 months to serve 32 days. I see here that he did receive credit for 16 days, which if applied as a two for one would satisfy that 32 days and that the balance would be suspended in this case. The only condition I see is that he stay away from the family dollar located at 4472 Campbellton Road in Southwest Atlanta, Georgia. As it relates to count two, obstruction of law enforcement officer, the recommendation is that it, that it be time served. 32 days, credit for the 16 days already served, and it would run concurrent with count one. Thank you. Mr. McLean, do you, does you, um... Does your client accept these terms and do you stipulate accordingly? Yes, Your Honor. Those are the terms we expected to hear. He does accept them. We do so stipulate uh, for the purpose of the plea. Okay. And Mr. Appling, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol? No, ma'am. And have you understood the proceedings so far? Yes, ma'am. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. And um, are you prepared to enter this plea and give up your constitutional right to a trial, the right to confront your accuser, to be able to challenge the evidence brought before you, to be able to present any defenses, and have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt? I'm sorry? Yes, ma'am. You are prepared to give up these rights? Yes. How do you plead to one count of loitering and prowling and obstruction of an officer? Mr. Yes. Appling, are you awake? I beg you. All right, thank you. With regards to loitering and prowling, your sentence is 12 months to serve 32 days, credit for time served 16 days. The remainder of the probation is suspended. However, you cannot return to the family dollar store at 4472 Campbellton Road in Southwest Atlanta. You have to stay 200 yards away from that store. And if you return anywhere near that location, you'll be arrested again for trespass. On count two, the sentence is concurrent. And with count one, that concludes your case. Thank you. And the bench warrant is null crossed. Uh, and and technically, your Honor, actually, on count two, it's just plain time served period, as I understand it. So, yeah. It's uh, time served 32 days. 16 days concurrent with count one. So I I just right. went with uh, concurrent with count one. Right, exactly. Thank you. All right. Okay, you're done. All right, good luck. Position, Next, um, position 23 through 27, this is Miss uh, Wild Client. Okay. All right. Let's uh, 
Mr. McLean, uh, before I begin with Ms. McLeod, did you were, were you going to say something? Uh, no, Your Honor. All right. And Mr. Rhodes, please submit the null cross for count two uh, to Ms. Strong uh, at the end of the calendar. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. All right. And uh, sorry, let me get to Mr. Myrick's cases. All right. Uh, this is State versus Drake Myrick. And Mr. Myrick, if you'll be patient, I have to go through your cases. Uh, we're going to, first of all, I'd like to remind you that you have a um, constitutional right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you is going to be Ms. Maureen McLeod. Uh, Mr. Drake Myrick begins with position 20, 23, case number 23CR 4867A, in which he's accused of simple battery, family violence, and false report of a crime from April 25th, 2022. The second case is 23CR 4964A. He's accused of battery, family violence, and terroristic threats and acts from September 19th, 2021. His third case is 24CR 1152A. He's accused of battery, family violence from April 29th, 2023. His other two cases are bench warrants, uh, 24 FTA 272 from December 7th, 2023. And um, second one is 24 FTA 273. Uh, the offense date is the same, De De December 7th, 2023. Um, Ms. McLeod, how are we proceeding? Your Honor, this morning, I would like to address the issue of some kind of bond for my client. All right. Uh, before we proceed with that, um, are you planning to waive arraignment for the... Yes, Your Honor, I will file a formal... All right. So for positions 23, 24, and 25, counsel is going to file a waiver of arraignment, and these cases are going to be further noticed for trial. Yes. All right. There All are right. some issues which I, I need to bring to the court's attention, Your Honor. As the court has probably more, more most likely noticed, he is in medical. That's mm -hmm. because his his foot is broken. And um, he's not had a cast or anything yet, Your Honor. So he actually needs some medical help. So we are trying to see if we can get bonds for him so he can get out, so he can get the treatment that he needs. And, and another thing, Your Honor, my client's cases were transferred. The FDA cases, they were transferred from Union City, that municipality. And for some reason, he did not get notice of the December hearings. And that is the reason for his FDAs. And I do know that sometimes I'm very familiar with the municipality of Union City because I, I go there a lot. And I do know that a lot of times when cases are transferred from that particular municipality, they are not transferred with the person's address for some reason. So very often they don't get notice. I do know that for a fact for Union, Union City because I worked there for several years as a public defender there. So that's where that knowledge comes from. And this is what he says that, you know, he just didn't get the notice. That's why he did not appear. Okay. Um, Ms. Tyson. Good morning, Anna. Good morning. Um, do we have, um, we do know that Mr. Drake was arrested for, uh, for battery family violence back in April, or soon after April 29, 2023. Mm -hmm. Have there been, um, I don't know where he was arrested, but he does have a cash bond presently of $2,000 and a surety bond of $4,000. Has he had any other issues since April of 2023? No, Your Honor, that was his last arrest. All right. Thank you. They are no longer in, they don't see each other anymore, Your Honor, the alleged victim. And of course, she has some cases outstanding to where my client is the alleged victim. All right. 
Mr. Rhodes, um, this is a request to modify his bonds on his bench warrants. Yes, Your Honor, and I am taking a quick look at uh, his uh, criminal history. Don't, these might be the same. I'm showing cycles nine and it's also a uh, failure to appear, but it might be a duplicate of the cases that counsel is talking about. I, I'm, I'm showing that a total of 11 cycles, Your Honor, uh, vast majority of them are battery family violence related. Um, but I do see that of the bond, you've shown a total of $6,000 in bond, but, but one of them is a $2,000 cash bond. As it relates to the $2,000, is it is it one that is, is it the $2,000 that's a cash bond or the $4,000? The battery family violence is a two thousand dollar cash bond, and the um, bench warrants are two thousand each, and those are surety bonds. So he's got a split bond. I see. I see, Your Honor. As it relates to the position number twenty five, which is twenty four CR zero zero one one five two A, which is the two thousand dollar cash bond, the state would have no objection to converting that to a two thousand dollar surety bond. And so that the other two positions, number 26 and position number 27, can remain $2,000 uh, surety bonds for a total of $6,000 um, surety bond. So that would alleviate the cash bond. Uh, Your Honor, I, I think that given the 11 cycles and the vast majority of them containing uh, family violence counts, that a $6,000 surety bond would be reasonable in this particular uh, case, or in these particular cases, but if you will, I'm, I am showing that he has been in for a total of, uh, if my calendar is correct, maybe 10 days. He's been in custody for 16 days. 16 days. So that's what the state would propose, Your Honor, amending that cash bond to a shorter bond of 2,000 or 6,000 total. Anything else to add, Ms. Um, McClellan? Your Honor, I would just ask the court to consider the fact that he did not get notice. Okay. Um, did he make the cash bond back in um, April of 2023? Looks like he did. Um, no, I don't think he did. This was an order from March 12, 2024. All right. Um, with regards to the uh, $2,000 cash bond that was issued on March 12, 2024, I'll amend that to a $2,000 surety bond. Uh, same conditions apply. Uh, no further contact with uh, Selena Sinclair Brown and to stay away from 5565 Hillcrest Drive. Is, is he back at that property? That I don't know, Your Honor. I don't think so, based on what I've... If that is where she lives, I don't think he's back there because the, the parties are, are not in contact any longer. That is my understanding. Well, is he staying at 5565 Hillcrest? Because I need to know what his current address is. 3 South, if you could unmute, please. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. I live there. That's my home. Selena Brown does not live there. She lives with her, her grandmother, I believe, or her mother. All right. Uh, well, is that your current address then? 5565 Hillcrest Drive? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, like I said, um, the if he made bond, did you pay the cash bond on the last time? No, you haven't paid the cash bond yet. So uh, that will be amended. So Ms. McLeod, if you could submit a proposed order on the position 25, I will amend that bond to a $2,000 surety bond. Yes, Your Honor. That's on position 25. Yes, Your Honor. No contact with Selena Sinclair Brown and uh, to make sure that he doesn't consume any drugs, no alcohol, no illegal drugs, no alcohol, and not possess any weapons or any firearms. On the bench warrants, I will amend those to a $2,000 signature bond 
through the jail. Thank you, Your Honor. That's 2,000 apiece, correct, Judge? Uh, yes, uh, position 23. I, I don't know what his bonds are on positions 23 and 24. Does, were those all, um, were those bonds all suspend? Those were all because of the bench warrants, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so on those, uh, because I'm amending the signature bond through a $2,000 signature bond through the jail, he should be released on a $2,000 surety. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Um, any other questions? No other questions, Your Honor. I will submit the, the order okay. to the client. Mr. Myrick, you need to make sure that your address is current with the court at all times. You will be sent notice for your next court date, and that will be for trial. So make sure that you keep in contact with your attorney and that you show up for court. I will. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. That concludes my business before the court. May I be excused? Yes. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Next, Judge, we have position seven and eight, Mr. Cordero Brown. This is State versus Cordero Lamar Brown. And um, Mr. Brown has. Uh, Case 23CR 7440Y, in which he's accused of battery from September 25th, 2022. Mr. Brown, you also have a bench warrant, uh, 24FTA 302, uh, failed to appear on January 10th, 2024. You've been advised of your right to remain silent, and your attorney is Mr. McLean. And I understand with regards to this case, this is going to be also a um, waiver of arraignment or? Correct, Your Honor, we can file that waiver of arraignment. He'd like to make a bond request. All right, so for position seven and eight, that's gonna be a waiver of arraignment and further notice for trial. Okay, and you give me a moment. Please. And I, you know, I'd just like to notate that the order was signed by Judge Edie and I don't, I don't know if it's still this court's practice to send that back to Judge Edie. Uh, let me see what's going on and then uh typically the practice is unless there's something specific judge ed has given the jo's um authority to consider bond modifications so zooming up to mr brown and i'm assuming he what's holding him at the jail is the bench warrant would that be correct mr mcclain i believe that is correct your honor okay All right, looks like um, we've had an accusation, plea and arraignment in which he failed to appear on January 10th. A bench warrant was issued. Uh, we've had notices sent back to the court and they were filed on January 16th. All right, yes, Mr. McLean. So essentially yeah. he's asking the court to reinstate him to freedom by asking for a signature bond, Your Honor. He says he did not intend at all to miss court. Um, this case is from the year 2022 in September. All right. so it's about a year and a half old. And it is uh, uh, the charge of one count of a misdemeanor and um, he does appreciate, of course, the uh, the offer from the state as being uh, what it is. But uh, he would like to address this further in a further proceeding, I believe a trial proceeding. And uh, he asked the court to reinstate him for freedom. He works at a nursing home. It's called Dunwoody Pine Retirement Home. And uh, he was at the time of this matter working an Uber job. So he's quite industrious, and uh, he will be steady and not miss court again. He's from Clarksdale, Mississippi, and uh, he can't afford that bond right now, but he, he can get back out there and make some money. All right. Uh, Ms. Tyson, uh, with regards to position seven, have we had any issues with Mr. Brown since after September 2022? 
No, Your Honor. He only has these two arrests on his uh, criminal history, the cases on the calendar and the FTA. That's it. Uh, Mr. Thomas, with regards to position seven, he's um, currently uh, facing a $2,000 surety bond. You know, the state's position is that the bond is currently set as reasonable, but the state will defer to the court as to the matter, okay. given his limited criminal history. Uh, Mr. Brown, I'll amend that to a $2,000 signature bond through the jail. Uh, I am concerned that we don't have a good address on you, which is um, probably why I'm not sure. I haven't heard a reason why you didn't show up to court, but we do have notices returned to the court. What is your current mailing address? Uh, 30 Cooper Lake Road. 30, did you say? 30. Okay, Cooper Lake, Cooper Lake Road. Where, what town? Uh, Mableton. Mableton. Okay, I've been there. Uh, 301. 26. 301. 26. Got it. All right. The problem is we have an apartment number and you didn't identify apartment number. 1A. 1A. Well, that's, that's pretty well. <laughs> Let me confirm that one, uh, one number one, Apple. Correct. Okay, so the address has to be corrected. Uh, within twenty four hours, today is Tuesday. Um, by five o'clock tomorrow, uh, make sure that we have the correct address on our system. So, uh, Miss Strong, do you want the information now? To update the address? Sure, but what position is this? Is this six or is this seven? Uh, this is this position is seven and uh, seven eight. and eight. Yes. Seven okay. and eight. Right. I, I'll take it now. Yes, Judge, I'm Ms. Strong. I'm handling it right now for you. All right. Mm -hmm. So we've got the 30 Cooper Lake Road. The apartment number has to be modified, and the zip was 30126. Correct. Okay. Make sure we have the correct address on Odyssey. And Mr. Brown, um, he's already been in custody for eight days, so I'm going to amend that to a signature bond through the jail. Mr. Brown, one of the well, the only thing the courts ask is that, well, two things is number one, always show up when summoned, and number two, don't get arrested again. Yeah. All right. So, and one of the ways we get in touch with you is through your mail. So if you you just have to make sure that we have your current address. I'm not sure where we got the first address from. But it's your responsibility to make sure that we have the current correct address. All right. Um, all other conditions remain the same. And what was the uh, amount, Judge? Uh, Two thousand dollars signature bond through the jail on the bench warrant. Uh, he's already and will reinstate his bond on position seven. So Mr. McLean will have to submit a proposed order on position seven and eight. So the, the 2K uh, signatures on eight and reinstate on seven. Got it. On seven, he really didn't have a bond. He was, looks like this might have been a bind over case. So if it makes it easier, you can just put $2,000 signature bond. Do you see what I mean, Mr. McClain? Uh, just put $2,000 signature bond on each. You mean, yeah, uh, yeah, signature bond through the jail. On Well, the bench warrants a signature bond through the jail. Okay. Because the only bond that's holding him in the jail is on the bench warrant. Right. That's really the only thing. He's just going to be reinstated to status quo on the position seven. Right. Uh, today, by coincidence, I'll be stopping by the court building at 160 to finish up after. Day. So, we'll all right, have, perfect. Have all the right forms with us and whatnot. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, next case, please. Watch your mail. Next, Your Honor, we're going to go to the probation calendar. It's going to be position number eight, position number nine, Mr. Terrence Simmons. All right. Uh, Mr. McLean, will you be also handling the probation matter for Terrence Simmons? Uh, not for Mr. Simmons, Your Honor. Um, his probation matter, you got Simmons on today. 
Uh, Ms. Vigiletti has him. She'll be right here. All right. Uh, Officer Barnes, good morning. Good morning. How are you, Your Honor? Fine. Thank you, sir. May I place yes. you on oath for purposes of probation cases? Do you yes, solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, I do, Your Honor. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, we have at 3 South, Ms. Vigiletti, your client, Terrence Simmons. Mr. Simmons, um, if we can unmute, we are addressing your probation revocation. Oh, he's in courtroom too. He's not on this side. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought it was three south. Okay. Thank you. Are your clients seated next to you? Okay, thank you. Uh, Terrence Simmons is seated next to his counsel in courtroom two. And uh, Mr. Simmons, your case number is 23CR1362G in which you've had a conviction for one or both of these offenses, discharge of a firearm uh, at or near a public highway or street and reckless conduct. And you've got a probation revocation case, uh, 24 PV 460. Please remember that you've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Ms. Vigiletti. Officer Barnes, um, what is the uh, conviction date for Mr. Simmons? What is, Mar yes, go ahead. I'm sorry, Your Honor. That conviction date was March 21st of 2023. March 21st of 23. And what were the what was the disposition? Um, that Mr. Simmons was supposed to complete 12 months of probation, 100 hours of community service, and a gun safety course. And why are we seeking a revocation of his probation? You know, Mr. Simmons has not completed any of those court order programs. He was before a revocation hearing on October the 18th of 2023 before Judge Mather. Um, at that time, Judge Mather did find a violation and ordered the defendant to be continued on probation um, to complete the 100 hours community service and to complete the gun safety course. To our um, you know, and also there was another revocation hearing was on January 31st of 2024 where the um, defendant was before Judge Mather, um, and there was a violation filed, um, and he did not appear in court for that revocation hearing. The notice was sent to the defendant on January 11, 2024, to appear on that hearing on that date. Um, at this time, Your Honor, we have no uh, proof or any um, indication that Mr. Simmons has completed the gun safety course or the one of community service, as imposed by the court. Um, at this time, Your Honor, it is seven days remaining on this particular case. Probation will respectfully ask that we um, time serve this case, Your Honor. All right. Ms. Vigiletti? Yes, Judge. I, I spoke with Mr. Simmons yesterday. He had been communicative and reporting initially with his probation officer, but um, he did fall on some tough times. He became homeless. We did talk about um, the requirements of probation. He had been working on the community service hours, although they, he did not submit them to the probation officer. He's been working on those hours. The gun safety course was coming up next. He, he, he needed to get a job before he could pay for the gun safety course. So, you know, he, he understood. He is apologetic. Um, we would ask that you uh, um, consider the the probation officer's recommendation of time served this morning and and uh close out this case all right um he's been in custody for 10 days uh he and i believe he's only got seven days left on his uh, sentence this will be commuted to time served this will be recorded as his third number three probation violation for this case Mr. Simmons, uh, this will be at least three probation violation uh, convictions on your record. Yes, so yes. If, you, uh, if you run the risk of being arrested again, this kind of information will be used by the judge uh, in terms of setting your bond, which is not gonna look very good. Yes. Do you understand? So even though you have not completed all the terms of your sentence, I just want to make sure that you understand that because of these probation violations, if you ever face a judge again in a similar situation, this particular record will not look good when it comes time to setting a bond. Just FYI. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, are we going to three south now or?
Probation three and four. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Judge. This is Mr. McLean's client, and he is speaking with another client right now. Um, is can he tear away from that client for a few moments to do this revocation matter? Yeah, here you go. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. McLean. Hi, Your Honor. What what's up? <laughs> uh, we have your client. I think Clyde Hudson at Three South. Would that be correct? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Hudson is on my list. All right, sir. What, num what number is that on the calendar? This is on the probation revocation calendar, positions three and four. This yes. is Clyde Lee Hudson Jr. On position four, his case number is 23CR5967J, in which he was convicted of simple battery. He's uh, got a probation revocation matter in case 24PB462. Mr. Hudson, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you is Mr. McLean. Uh, do you see Mr. McLean on your screen? Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Officer Barnes, you've already been sworn in. What was... Uh, the disposition and why are we seeking a revocation? Your Honor, the, um, the case was before the court on July 20th of 2023. Um, and at the time, Your Honor, the, Mr. Hudson was sentenced to 12 months of probation to complete 50 hours of community service, no contact with the victim in this case or the victims in this case. Um, and he was ordered to report and pay supervision fees. Mr. Hudson has never reported to probation leaving an outstanding balance of 50 hours of community service um, and the total balance of $147 on his supervision fees. At this time, Your Honor, it's 274 days remaining on this case. Um, at this time, Your Honor, we will ask that Mr. Hudson be um, community the time served, Your Honor. He's got 274 days and you want yes. to commute it to time served? Yes, ma'am. What reason? Um, I, Your Honor, um, just looking into the matter of this case, um, You know, this is not my case, Your Honor. So I'm just trying to um, look at. If you give me one second, please. Let me just. Okay, no problem. The case. Mm According to our records, Mr. Hudson has been in jail since January 28, 2024. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it was the recommendation of the probation officer at that time frame because he was um, been in jail since January 28, 2024, that they were recommending that he be given credit for the time he's been in jail and to uh, pretty much close this particular case. Um, but however, if the court seemed to uh, reinstate the defendant's probation um, to the original terms, probation would not be opposed to that. Okay. Mr. McClain? Uh, your, I think the, the point was really that although uh, certainly he does have a lot of time left uh, that could be used, he did spend quite a chunk of time on what normally as a, a charge would not bring a big chunk of time sitting in a jail. And so I think they were uh, having a little sympathy for him there. <laughs> Thank you. Understood. Uh, this will be recorded as a probation violation on Mr. Hudson's record. I'm going to uh, give him, he's got 274 days left on uh, probation. Uh, he will be given credit for the 59 days that he's been in custody which will give him credit for 118 days. Um, someone do the math for me, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me see. 
which will leave him with 156 days left on probation. Um, I will give, he, I'll continue him on probation. He will report to probation uh, this Thursday before 3 p.m. Three South, please unmute. Mr. Hudson, do you understand? You have 156 days left on probation. You must continue on probation to complete the rest of the time. You must report to probation this Thursday. Today is Tuesday. You report on Thursday before 3 p.m. If you don't report, we'll issue another warrant for your arrest. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You must report to 132 Mitchell Street in downtown Atlanta. When yes, you report, uh, you must start uh, working on completing your community service and you must complete at least 10 hours within the next 30 days and continue with uh, 10 hours um, every month minimum until you've completed the 50 hours. After you've yes, completed the 50 hours of community service, your probation may terminate. Yes, so ma'am. The sooner you're done with the community service, the sooner you're done with probation. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. But you must complete a minimum of 10 hours every month. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ms. Officer Barnes, that will be the court's recommendation to continue on probation, credit for time served, and report on Thursday before 3 p.m. and complete at least 10 hours um, every 30 days. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, I think we have uh, Mr. McLean. I'm sorry to interrupt. You can resume your conversation with your client. Are we ready to proceed with the next case? Uh, who is the next case, Your Honor? Someone was we walking up to you. Your iPhone, Your Honor. Okay. okay. We have a uh, position number twelve, Mr. Harris. Is that on the regular calendar? Yes, Your Honor. It is. Number twelve is on the regular calendar. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And Miss Vigiletti, are we still proceeding with an arraignment? Uh, I can waive his arraignment. Uh, Mr. Harris would like to enter a not guilty plea today and be heard on bond. All right. This is State versus Terry Lee Harris, 24CR 1182J, accused of battery, family violence. Um, Mr. Harris, uh, my name is Judge Law. Please remember that you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you presently is Ms. Vigiletti. Do you see your attorney on the screen? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. Can, uh, I, speak you are... to, can I speak to him privately first right quick? Sure. Okay. Sure, yeah, let me, I'll log into Zoom really quickly and, and we can have a, a quick conversation. All right. Uh, is Mr. McLean ready to address the next case if he's available? Mike, do you have somebody? Uh, I do. Yeah, he's right here. All right. I'm sure. I'm sure we have several that are ready. Let's see who's who. What's your name? No. Yeah, he's not on the calendar. Okay. We've got a few here that aren't on the calendar, so we're just checking to see what we've got in the courtroom. Can we go to position number ten and eleven, Mr. Webb, on the probation? Revocation calendar. All right. Oh, that's that's you. Um, no, disregard that, Your Honor. Uh, he, everyone else is uh, Ms. Vigiletti. Yeah, mm -hmm. I believe Mr. McCormick is going to be a not guilty and a signature bond request, Your Honor. We uh, we could address that. Okay. Um, this is not a probation matter, correct? Correct. It is All right. Right. I know Officer Barnes has popped in. Uh, he is vigilant as usual. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, Yana. <laughs> All right. Okay. Position 18, we have Mr. Brian McCormick, um, who is case number 23CR 2053D, in which he's accused of battery family violence from March 20th, 2023. And Mr. McCormick has also a... Um, Second case, which is 23CR 
2055D, in which he's accused of possession, use of drug-related objects, and giving false information to an officer, as well as the two bench warrants, 24FTA-292 and 24FTA-293. Um, all right, uh, with regards to Mr. McCormick, um, I believe he's entering a not guilty plea. Would that be correct? Yes, Your Honor, he is. All right. Do you need me to arraign the case? Uh, no, Your Honor, we can we can do the uh, file the formal written waiver on that uh, as soon as court's over with. All right. So position 18, 19, 20, and 21 will be further notice for trial. Please be sure to send your documents to uh, Ms. Strong. All right. Um, anything else to address with Mr. McCormick? Uh, bond request, Your Honor. He needs to be out, and so his request is for a signature bond on any matter of the four lines that uh, would need that. Your Honor, he has recently- oh, I'm sorry, Mr. McLean, may I just put you on pause for one second? I sure. do apologize. Miss right. um, Grace, could you place Miss Vigiletti? She's joined the Zoom as Olivia, and jail court iPhone in a breakout, please. Yes, ma'am. Jail court iPhone, please uh, make sure you join the breakout. Okay. I'm sorry about that, Ms. McLean. Yes, sir. Uh, you were saying? Uh, Your Honor, as soon as we get back to a computer, I think we'll find that on these four lines, case number one, case number two, and the FTA and the FTA, that there is right now a $6,000 obligation standing between him and freedom. He doesn't have $6,000. However, Your Honor, I should say about him the following. He grew up in the Orlando area. He went to a pop cut. Florida is for high school. He joined the Marine Corps and he had a training accident which was traumatic to his body. It also affected his ability to concentrate occasionally, some fogginess, but your honor, he's on uh, disability from the VA, not from social security, not from SSI, but it's actually a VA disability and he's been in jail. So now his check has been cut off. He has uh, seeks his he seeks and receives his medical um, treatment from the VA hospital on Claremont, which we are all very familiar with. He knows Mr. Byron Tinsley of the Veterans Homeless Program because uh, Mr. Tinsley used to work here and used to work with us, and he has met with Mr. Tinsley in the last several months and with Mr. Tinsley's assistance uh, assistant singular. Your Honor, he ran into an acquaintance uh, at the VA who has offered him stable housing. And this stable housing will be at a certain address, 2925 Barrett Court, in Outer Springs, Georgia. And um, so with the stable mailing address and turning back on the disability check, uh, he would be in great shape for paying very close attention to not missing court and addressing this with a jury trial. All right, uh, Mr. No. McLean, uh, do you understand that in addition to the $6,000 bench warrant, he also has a superior court matter that's holding him? I'll, I'll look into that and contact whatever, uh, whatever. Uh, okay, it's the CWAC uh, hold that's uh, holding him. Right, I'll look into that. Whatever public defender or other attorney is representing him on that will certainly communicate. Okay. But he, um, is, he is honorably discharged and uh, he's got a job lined up to renovate a house and uh, he'll be able to do that despite the slight fogginess he gets occasionally. He'll uh, he'll be able to renovate that house and, and uh, ask the court to, to facilitate that. Um, Miss... Uh... Well, okay. Um, Mr. Pierre Thomas, I'm aware of the uh, the warrant that was issued uh, back on, I'm trying to get the date on this warrant. October 18, 2023. I don't know if that's still holding him. Let me see. It was October 18th. He was booked into the jail. on January 27th.
All right. Uh, all right, um, Mr. Uh, Pierre Thomas, without referencing the Superior Court matter, um, any other comment about the request for a bond modification? No request. I, I think you've already pointed out that the, these are not the only things that are holding him. He's on a no bond status in the in the um, Superior Court charge. Um, the the basically the position of the state is that the six thousand dollar request is reasonable. It is the result of two uh, failure to appears, two separate failure to appears. Um, I could read the facts of the case, but I'm sure your honor is quite familiar and aware. Yeah. Um, but the state's position is that the bond is currently set as reasonable. Uh, since they are sequential numbers on the FTA, did they actually occur on the same date or not? Um, they actually occurred on the um, same day. Right. So I, I don't think of them as being separate, but I understand the state's position. Okay. Anything else, uh, Mr. Pierre Thomas? Nothing further from the state, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, with regards to uh, position number 18 and I mean, with regards to the bench warrant, which is what's holding him, um, I'm going to amend that to a $6,000 signature bond through pretrial, which he can avail himself uh, once he resolves his superior court hold. He'll be required to report to pretrial. He'll be on a level two, which means that he reports twice a month. No, all other original conditions remain the same, including no contact with the victim, uh, Jennifer McCormick, and to stay away from the Huntington Place location, no weapons, no firearms, no illegal drugs, no alcohol. He may be subject to random screens by pre-12, and he can only avail himself of uh, those services um, he must also make sure that he maintains a current address with the court at all time. The address we currently have is Peter Street. Any changes? Your Honor, Peter Street, I believe, is the Baptist uh, mission there. Uh, that's that's a familiar address to all of us. So I'm thinking that uh, this 2925 Barrett Court in Powder Springs is the, uh, he doesn't know the zip code, but he does know the exact house. He's been there uh, and he knows the exact house. We don't have that address, sir. Right. So we need we need to put that in. I'll provide that to the clerk. All right. Please provide that to Miss Melissa Grace as soon as you can. He needs to maintain a current address. As I've said, uh, he, he can avail himself of pretrial and go through the orientation. But unfortunately, he would can only begin that once his superior court hold is resolved. Right. Yes, Ms. Trump? Was this three and three or six and six? Oh, it'll be four on um uh, position on the 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 bonds are on his FTAs. Correct. So it'll be a four thousand dollar signature bond on position twenty three and two thousand on no, position twenty. Oh, 20, 20. Excuse me. Let me go back. Um. On position uh, 20, it'll be 4,000. Mm -hmm. And on position 21, it'll be 2,000. Okay, thank you. Level two, please. Pre trial. All right, Mr. McCorm, uh, Mr. Uh, McLean. Mr. McCormick, uh, you can confer with the Public Defender's Office, but I need to get on to my next case. Thank you. Thank you. Good Position three and four, Mr. Uh, Dave Barnes on the South. Your Honor, in, in that case, before we proceed with the defendant himself, could I get uh, a, a way to communicate with either Mr. Rhodes or Mr. Pierre Thomas, whoever has the case? Uh, there's something I need to bring up to them. All right, Mr. Pierre Thomas, is that to your matter, Mr. David uh, Barnes? It's my it's my matter, but he would have to communicate with both of us, as I'm I'm assuming he's asking for some sort of counter offer. That's correct. That's what we announced, and I need uh, I need to talk with y'all about that. So, all right. Uh, I, think, I think once I get to the window where the reception for the phone is good. We have to go to the next room and stand by the window. Uh, if you would chat to me a good phone number to call. Well, no, as soon as you get on the Zoom, I'll put you in a breakout with Mr. Pierre Thomas, Mr. Rhodes, and your device. Okay. All right. Uh, Deputy at 3 South, 
for Mr. Barnes. We're going to hold a few moments. His attorney needs to speak to the prosecutor. All right. Uh, jail court iPhone, who do we have? Jail court iPhone, who do we have, please? We have a position number... Uh, it's position, 12. position number 12, I'm sorry, Mr. Harris. Okay. Miss um, Vigiletti, are we ready to proceed with Mr. Harris? Yes, Judge. Mr. Harris would like to enter a not guilty plea this morning and be heard on bond. All right. As I was um, telling Mr. Harris, he's already been advised of his right to remain silent and counsel. And um, his case is 24CR1182J, accused of battery, family violence. And I understand, I, I, I'm sorry, refresh my memory. Were you planning to file a waiver of arraignment? Uh, yes, Judge. Okay. So this is going to be a waiver of arraignment and the case is going to be further notice for trial. Okay. And uh, let me see, zooming back to Mr. Harris's case. Mr. Harris was uh, booked in on March 12, 2024. He has a $2,500 surety bond on the misdemeanor charge brought against him for battery family violence. And he's also got a hold um, in another jurisdiction, uh, Houston County, I believe, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. All right. And Ms. Vigiletti? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, so we are uh, requesting today, Judge, for you to consider um, providing Mr. Harris a signature bond so he can be released to his hold in Houston County. I did speak with jail staff in Houston County this morning. Um, he, they do intend to come pick him up when he's done at Fulton County on a forgery charge that will take some, some time to sort out as this case, as we await this case to, to go to a trial, Judge. Um, that wouldn't crazy, but we about in them o'clock now. Katina Singleton. Katina Singleton. Please start your video. Um, All right, Mr. You. Harris does have significant community, local community. His son Terry is here. Um, his family is very supportive. He has multiple adult children that um, you know are are supportive of him. They actually would have paid his bond, but they just recently just very, very recently had a, an unexpected and tragic death in the family of Mr. Harris's brother. He actually did miss the funeral because he was incarcerated. So they were they were paying for burial expenses, but they're absolutely here on his side. Mr. Harris, I don't know if you'd like to unmute your video so so Judge Law can see you're here on your, on your dad's behalf. Um, he has every incentive to show up for court because he does have a one-year-old child with the complaining witness. And so right, just one second. Terry Harris, are you driving? Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's why I have remove, that's remove, why I had my uh, remove him from Zoom. Remove from Zoom. Out. You're out. You can come back in once you're parked. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Vigiletti. Yeah, I, yes, Judge. Sorry about that. Um he does have every incentive to show up for court and resolve this case because he and the complaining witness do have a one-year-old child together. He's very active in the child's life. Um, so, you know, in consideration of the of the community support, his incentive to show up for court, I, I don't think he's a, a, at risk of, of not attending his court date. And, um, you know, if we release him to the hold in Houston County, he has a chance to, you know, resolve this other case and, and do something productive as he's awaiting trial. Okay. Um... Ms. Tyson, could you refresh my memory? How many arrest cycles was in this case? There are eight cycles, Your Honor. Okay. Any FTAs? No, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Pierre Thomas? Do you have any felony convictions, Ms. Tyson? Do you have two outside of the 10-year period? And it looks like both of them are for drugs and there one is you know one's from 97 the other one's from 2000 
That's what we had as well, Your Honor. Our concern with the matter, first of all, the state's position is that bond is currently set is reasonable. Our concern with the matter is the presence of the firearm. I believe the allegation is that he uh, was waving the firearm. Hold on. That he was, yeah, he was waving the firearm and threatening the victim. Victim in this case is Angel Daniels and others. Uh, that is that is our concern with the matter. Uh, and so we believe that bond is currently set is is more than reasonable. Okay. And obviously, as you know, with the underlying felony conviction, the presence of even a firearm is a potential felony. Understood. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to amend that to a, a $5,000 signature bond through the jail. And uh, no contact with Dan, I think it was called Angel Daniels. Mr. Ha Terry Harris, it looks like you're still driving. Oh, no, you on. I pulled over, I promise. I, I turned my camera around. I pulled over. I'm on the side of the road, you I okay. pulled over. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Right. I'm sorry, you I'm very right. sorry. Do, do you want to address the court before I make a... I've already issued a $5,000 signature bond through the jail. Do you have any objection to that? No, Your Honor, I just want to say uh, thank you. And we would have paid the bond, but his brother um, got stabbed 47 times. No, I don't, I don't need prison. those details. I just want to know whether you have any objection to him being released on this bond, but he's going to have conditions. Oh, no, okay, thank you. Sorry, bro. All right, on Terry Lee Harris, it's going to be a $5,000 signature bond through the jail. No contact with Angel Daniels. Mr. Harris, please understand you have to stay. That's Mr. Um, Defendant Terry Lee Harris, he needs to stay 200 yards away from Angel Daniels. And uh, originally, I think, um, okay, and then he needs to be released to the hold in Houston County only. Once he has resolved that hold, he needs to make sure that we have a good address on him at all times. He's not allowed to possess or own any firearms. And, um, and he needs to make sure he shows up to court when summoned. Any questions, Defendant Harris? Oh, no, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Harris, I'm going to come get a good address from you after court, okay? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. All right. And please understand that if you get arrested again, your signature bond will disappear into thin air, and your next bond will be $5,000. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. All on you. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. McLean, you need to speak with um, Miss. You're going to be um, occupying both our prosecutors, so uh, please make this as quick as possible so I can move on with the calendar. All right. So, Mr. I'm sorry, Miss Grace, if you could place uh, Mr. Mike McLean, Mr. Lamar Rhodes, and Mr. Pierre Thomas in a breakout room. Yes, ma'am. So the calendar can move along, Your Honor. I can go in the breakout room and Mr. Tom, I'll, I'll advise Mr. Thomas. All right. Mr. McLean and Mr. Rhodes uh, will be in a breakout room. Mr. Pierre Thomas will remain with us. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, jail court iPhone, who do you have, please? We are about uh, position number five on the probation calendar, Mr. Beatles. Okay. Oh, that's also mine, Your Honor, but he has a case on the main calendar, not just the probation. All right, so um, we'll have to hold on him until Mr. McLean's available. Yeah, okay. Miss McLean, uh, Miss Grace, please go ahead and put Mr. McLean and Mr. Rhodes in a breakout. Same instructions. Arriba, arriba. Okay, thank you. Next, Your Honor, we have position number 10 and position number 11 on a probation revocation calendar. Mr. Webb. Miss uh, Vigiletti, is that your case? Yes, Judge. Okay, thank you. All right, Mr. Pierre Thomas, we will address uh, Terrius Denard Webb, positions 10 and 11. Uh, Mr. Webb's case is 21CR7490A, accused of battery, family violence, uh, in which he was not accused, sorry, convicted of battery, family violence. Um, and he has a probation revocation matter. Uh, 24 PV 391. And um, Mr. Webb, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you choose to say during the course of these proceedings, your statements can and will be used against you. 
You have a right to an attorney and your counsel is going to be Miss Vigiletti. Do you see Miss Vigiletti? Oh, is he, see, is he the one seated next to you? All right, I'm so sorry. We have two screens open. Okay. Mr. Webb is seated next to Miss, Miss uh, to his attorney, Miss Vigiletti. All right. Um, Officer Barnes, you've already been sworn. Uh, what was the uh, disposition in Mr. Webb's case and why are we seeking a revocation? Yes, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Webb was before the court on April the 13th of 2022 for the offense of battery family violence. He was sentenced to stay away from the victim. I'm sorry, I'll stay away from the victim and the incident location of 50 Mount Zion, kind um, of share screens, and to complete the family violence intervention program. Uh, Mr. Webb did report uh, for a total of three times, the last date being July 5th of 2022, and had not reported back since then. Um, at that time, Your Honor, Mr. Webb has not provided proof of completing the domestic violence counseling. Um, and at this time, Your Honor, 76 days remaining on this particular case. It is the recommendation of the probation department to revoke the balance of 76 days, Your Honor. 76 days? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Vigiletti? Uh, yes, Judge. Um, as Officer Barnes said, you know, Mr. Webb was reporting. He fell on some difficult times and stopped reporting. It's the first thing he said to me when, when I spoke to him today. He did not re fully realize the Family Violence Intervention Program is six months long. I understand with only 76 days left, he can't possibly complete that program, but he is motivated to do something to prove himself on this probation. And so um, we're requesting perhaps a conversion to anger management. He does have time to do eight weeks of anger management um, to, you know, just just uh, something is, is better than nothing in probation cases. And, and um, he does work and he, he does handiwork for a woman named Faith. Um, he lives with his aunt. He does have, um, you know, things he could get back to and be productive with if we uh, were to not to revoke these 76 days, if we were to put him on anger management, let him um, finish out his probation. I do think it would be a more productive use of his time. So that's our request today. I, I'm sorry, I still don't understand why he didn't report or do the time other than the fact that he fell on hard times. What was the reason why he didn't even show up to let us know where he is. We've had this probation warrant out for quite some time. I understand, Judge. Um, Ms. I mean, Ms. Mr. Webb failed a drug test and, and was afraid to come back. It, it was a fear-based decision. Um, he had, we did discuss today some outpatient programs to get back on track with um, his recovery um, and that that is what happened. He he became afraid to to show up. Okay. Um, Miss Tyson, any um any arrests since April of twenty twenty two? For Mr. Terrius, I'm sorry. No. Okay. No, no sense. Uh, Mr. Webb was booked into the jail on March 14th. He's already been in custody for 13 days. He'll be given credit for the 13 days, which is 26 days. And that will be deducted from the balance that he's got remaining, which is 76 days, which means he has 50 more days left on his probation. Uh, this 50 days is going to be uh, revoked and he'll complete the rest of the time at the Fulton County Jail. He has 25 more days to serve at the Fulton County Jail, and then this case will be closed. So I'm revoking the balance, giving him credit for the uh, 13 days, and he needs to serve up the balance. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ms. Vigilati, do you have um, any other cases in the courtroom? Uh, yes, Judge. I'm sorry. One, one, yeah. This is going to be position number 45 and 46, Mr. Leonard White. 
Okay. Regular SAP calendar, Your Honor. And jail court iPhone, we are still waiting for uh, Mr. McLean to finish his conference on that case. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. 45. And that would be uh, Mr. Leonard White. All right. I have a possible non negotiated plea. Is it still a possible? Uh, yes, Judge. Mr. White did just have one fairly minor request today. I don't I don't know if this is enough to make it have it be considered a non negotiated plea. Um, he is very motivated to finish the anti theft course in the community service and was wondering if his probation could terminate or move to a non reporting status upon completion of those requirements. Right. And Mr. Pierre Thomas, what's the state's position on termination or non reporting probation? One moment, Yana. Let me let me look further into his criminal history. What? I see on position forty five is balance suspended, but position forty six is a reporting probation. Okay. With that logic, Your Honor, I do believe that the state is okay with moving forward with having both be balance suspended. Oh, so no anti theft class. Well, yes, he can do the anti-theft class, but the balance could suspend after the anti-theft class, after the completion okay. of the special conditions. So terminate probation after conditions are completed. Mm -hmm. Okay, understood. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Vigiletti, uh, the state's amenable to uh, probation being terminated after he finishes the anti-theft class and 40 hours of voluntary community service. Yes, Judge, in that case, I think we're ready to proceed with the plea today. Okay. This is State versus Leonard Ray White, case number 23CR 678E, accused of criminal trespass and giving false information to an officer. I think there are th two counts of giving false information to an officer, but it looks like count three will merge into count two. Uh, with regards to the second case, it is 24CR 1157E, accused of theft by taking from March 11th, 2024. Mr. White, um, you have been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Ms. Vigiletti. May I place you under oath for purposes of the plea? Mr. White, do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes. Thank you. All right, and what are the recommendations for Mr. White on positions 45 and 46? As it relates to position 45, Your Honor, uh, which appears to be the case ending in 0678, the recommendation is on count one criminal trespass for the defendant to serve 12 months on probation, uh, to serve six days in custody credit for the three days that he's already served in custody. It appears that he served those days from February 1st, uh, 2023 to February 3rd, 2023, for the balance to be suspended for him to stay away from 84 12th Street, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia. Um, on count two, giving false information to a law enforcement officer that is a time served offer, uh, credit for the six day, I mean, I'm sorry, time served six days to serve credit for the three days that he's already served. And as it relates to count three, giving false information to a law enforcement officer, that would merge with count two, Your Honor. Uh, lastly, Your Honor, on position 46, ending in 01157E, theft by taking, the recommendation from the state is 12 months probation to serve 32 days, credit for the 16 days that he's already served. Looks like he began to serve that on March 11th, 2024, uh, until today. The state would request for the balance to be suspended only so that there could be some additional stay away from all uh, Georgia Tech properties, the special conditions, and that would be, um, the special conditions would be for him to complete an anti-theft course in 40 hours of community service. And I do believe that is all. All right. Ms. Vigiletti? Uh, stipulate and does your client accept these terms? Yes, I we do stipulate the factual basis, identity, and venue for the purposes of the plea. And yes, provided... Um, probation terminate the, upon completion of the anti theft class in the 40 hours of community service. Then, um, Mr. White is prepared to um, enter a plea today, and we just ask the court to accept the recommendation of the state. All right. Mr. White, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol? Have, I? have you consumed any medicine or alcohol recently? Uh, just tired enough for a headache. 
Yes, headache. And uh, are you still able to understand the proceedings? Yes, I am. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, I am very much. And is anybody forcing you or inducing you to take this plea today? No. If you decide to plead guilty to these charges, you would have to give up your constitutional right to a trial in front of a judge or a jury. You will yes. not have the assistance of counsel to confront your accuser, to be able to present any uh, defenses or arguments, to challenge the evidence brought before you, and to have the state try to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes. On position 45, regarding criminal trespass and one count of giving false information to an officer, how do you plead? Yes. On the trespass, your sentence is going to be 12 months to serve six days, credit for time served three days, balance suspended. You must stay away from 84 12th Street in Northeast Atlanta. If you return to that location, you will be arrested again. Do you understand? Yes. Count two will be time served to serve six days, credit for time served three days. Um, that's considered a time served plea. Count three will merge with count two. Uh, with regards to position 46, how do you plead to one pound of theft by taking? Yes. Your sentence is 12 months to serve on probation. You are to serve 32 days, credit for time served 16 days. The remainder of the time you will be on probation. You must report to probation next Tuesday, which will be April 2nd. And you must report to that office before 3 p.m. at 132 Mitchell Street in downtown Atlanta. Failure to report can result in your probation being revoked and uh, serving out the rest of the year in jail. Uh, while you're on probation, you will complete an anti-theft class. You have 60 days to enroll and complete that anti-theft class. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. So that, that means in the first two months, not only must you have enrolled, but you must also complete the course. And you are also to complete 40 hours of voluntary community service. You must complete a minimum of 10 hours per month at any nonprofit agency that's not a church and not a school. So whenever you report to probation from the second time onwards, you must show that you've completed at least 10 hours. Okay. Um, you are to stay away from all Georgia Tech property. Once you've completed your community service and your anti-theft class and all your probation fees are up to date, your probation will then terminate. I'm sure. All right. Uh, please keep in mind that if you return to any of the Georgia Tech property and you're arrested again for trespass, uh, you could yeah. also risk having this probation revoked as well. Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you, General. Mr. McLean is. Um, I'm sorry, Judge. May I ask a, a quick question? I just learned that um, Georgia Tech is in possession of Mr. White's ID. Is it possible for him to have a one time police escort to go retrieve it? He needs to approach the Georgia Tech Police <laughs> Safety Office and let them know that he's got to stay away and perhaps they have his ID on person. So it's a one-time visit to Georgia Tech Police Office. Okay, thank you, Judge. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Mr. McLean, is he raring to go? All right. Uh, yes, uh, we have Mr. Barnes ready. Okay. Mr. David Barnes. Yes. Mr. David Barnes is uh, at the jail court iPhone, accused of terroristic threats and acts in 23 C. Uh, 3 South, not the iPhone, 3 South. I'm sorry, he's at 3 South, okay. Jail court, please mute, thank you. All right, 3 South. Mr. David Barnes is accused of terroristic threats and acts in case 23 CR 5841C. And he's got a second case, uh, unlawful conduct during a 911 call. And this is in case 24CR1140C. Mr. Barnes, you've been advised of your right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and representing you is Mr. Michael McLean. Um, how are you proceeding with Mr. Barnes? 
Your Honor, we're going to enter a guilty plea on number three to reduce charge of disorderly conduct, and we're going to enter a guilty plea as charged to number four. All right. Um, Rizal, please unmute. Mr. Barnes, may I place you under oath for purposes of the plea? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Mr. Rhodes, what's the recommendation for Mr. Barnes on position three? Yes, Your Honor. As it relates to position number three, the terroristic threats and acts now being amended to a disorderly conduct. The state's recommendation is 12 months to serve 34 days. Our records reflect that he's already served a total of 17 days. And if he was given two for one, that would suffice the 34 days he's served. The balance then to be on probation. No further uh, contact with Ms. Kathy Hunt, uh, the victim in this case, a stay away from 35 Northside Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. We're asking that the court uh, orders eight weeks of anger man anger awareness uh, for uh, Mr. Barnes as it relates to position number three. On position number four, we're asking that it runs concurrent, that case, unlawful conduct during 911 call runs concurrent with position number three, which is 23CR005841C. And we're asking for the 12 months to serve uh, 30 days. Uh, obviously, if he's been in 17 days and it runs concurrent, he would he would still be uh, given uh, credit for time served. That the balance be on probation, but that probation runs concurrent with the probation in position number three. We're further asking that as it relates to position number four, however, that he undergoes a mental health evaluation and treatment as well as alcohol drug evaluation and treatment, that he is to have no firearms uh, while on probation, and that, as already indicated, this is a global recommendation to run concurrent with the other case. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Just to clarify, Mr. Uh, Rhodes, on position three, was that no violent contact or no contact with Kathy Hunt? That's a... Um, I believe it's no contact, Your Honor, because the stay away is from 35 Northside Drive is where she actually lives. It's usually NFBC, NFBC when there's no further violent contact. So I'm I'm assuming that was a typo and that is no contact. But okay. I would ask that Your Honor sound from Miss Hunt. Miss Kathy Hunt. 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 All right, Ms. Hunt, if you're on Zoom, this will be a good time to start your video and unmute. Okay. And just to other point of clarification is the state will be submitting a amended accusation to disorderly conduct on position three? Yes, Your Honor, we will. Okay. So you'll be issuing a null pros on terroristic threats and amending it to um, uh, disorderly conduct, correct? That is correct. Uh, I believe that Mr. Uh, Thomas indicated that when we, because it is a lesser included, we may not necessarily have to do the null process. Is that correct, Mr. Thomas? Is it just an amendment? That is correct. It's just an amendment. And both have, okay. that has been submitted already to the court. It's been filed down and submitted via email as well. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And then uh, Mr. Uh, McLean. With regards to uh, position three, okay, and four, what is this your client agree to these terms? Uh, yes, Your Honor, he does. And on the no violent contact versus no contact, the no contact's no problem. That's not a person with whom he had a relationship, even a friendship. Uh, she simply worked at the same place where he lived. And she's no longer there that we know of, but it doesn't matter. He's not going to be there either. Okay. Anything else with regards to position four then? Nothing, Your Honor. All right. And he understands that he has to do both an MH and uh, alcohol and drug ET. Yes, Your Honor. We ran, uh, during the visit, we ran over those uh, items. Okay. All right. And you stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID for both cases? For the purpose of the plea, we do. All right. Thank you. Three South, please unmute. <laughs> Mr. Barnes, I have to ask you some questions just to make sure that you understand what you're pleading guilty to and that you are uh, willing 
and um, and you understand the consequences of pleading guilty to these charges. Yes, yes ma'am. All right, Mr. Barnes, have you consumed any medication or alcohol recently? No, ma'am. And have you understood what's been going on with your cases? And have you understood your conversations with your lawyer? Yes, I have. And are you satisfied with his services? Yes, ma'am. Is anyone forcing you to plead guilty today? No, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty to one count of disorderly conduct and one count of unlawful conduct during a 911 call, you would have to give up your constitutional right to ever challenge these charges in a court of law. You will not get a chance to have a jury trial or a bench trial. You will not get the assistance of counsel to go back to court so that you can confront your accuser, challenge the evidence brought before you, present your arguments and defenses, and have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to one count of disorderly conduct? Guilty. How do you plead to one count of unlawful conduct during a 911 call? Guilty. Your sentence is going to apply the same with regards to both these cases. It is going to be 12 months uh, to be served on probation, to serve 34 days, credit for time served 17 days. Uh, the remainder of the time you'll be on probation. You must report to probation next Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, March 26th. You will report to probation next Tuesday on April 2nd before 3 p.m. The probation office is located at 132 Mitchell Street in downtown Atlanta. Do you understand, sir? Yes, ma'am, I do. While you're on probation, you shall have no contact with Kathy Hunt. You are to stay 200 yards away from her and not communicate with her in any way, form, or manner. You are to stay away from 35 Northside Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. And while you're on probation, you are to complete eight weeks of anger awareness classes or anger management classes. You must begin those classes within 60 days of being released. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am, I do. The school where you do the anger management classes, you can ask your probation officer for recommendations. In addition to these conditions, you're also to complete a MH evaluation and an alcohol and drug evaluation and submit yourself to any treatment that's required. Has your attorney explained to you what that means? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand those evaluations? Yes, ma'am. These evaluations must be completed within 60 days of being released. And okay. then if any treatments required, you must submit yourself to that treatment. Yes, ma'am. At all times, you're not to consume any illegal drugs. You're not to consume any alcohol. And you are not to be in possession of any firearms. Do you understand, sir? Yes, ma'am. If you own any firearms, you must be surrendered to the authorities for destruction. Yes, ma'am. That completes your sentence. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Mr. McLean, uh, jail court iPhone. Are we ready to proceed with you? Is that your client? That's your client as well, correct? This is up to number five on a probation calendar, Mr. Beatles. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, he's on the main calendar um, as numbers, let's see. One and two. Please, on, is, he, is he number five on the uh, Beatles, number five on the main calendar? Yes, number five on the main calendar and uh, one and two on a probation. Okay, let me see. Position five on the main calendar. Yes, uh, this is a new arrest from March 16th, 2024. Okay, and then he's on the probation revocation matter. Positions one and two. And uh, looks like it's for a DUI and expired license. So uh, your call, Mr. McLean, which one would you like to address first? 
of the main calendar, Your Honor. I put okay. that down as a non-negotiated plea. Okay. Um, let me see. What's the non-negotiated portion? Uh, just the amount of uh, extra days. He would like it to be as close to zero or zero if possible. But uh, as as it stands, the 60 divided by half, by two would equal 30. 30 minus 11 would equal 19. So that's uh, a bit of a, it's almost three weeks into the future. And he would uh, like to uh, not have that. <laughs> With all due respect, I'm going to start with the probation revocation matter first. Very good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Franklin Gregory Beatles uh, has got a probation revocation matter uh, from a uh, 20 case in uh, from 2022. Mr. Beatles, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney and Mr. Michael McLean will be representing you in all your cases held today. <clears throat> On the probation revocation matter, the original case was 22 CR 4391D, in which you were convicted of driving under the influence of alcohol less safe and or uh, expired or no license on person. Um, with regards to the probation violation case, that's 24 PV 459. Uh, Officer Barnes, uh, when was what were the terms of his disposition, and um, when was he convicted, and what's the reason for the revocation? Yeah, Mr. Beaters was before the court on January 27, 2023, for the offense of uh, DUI alcohol, let's say. He was sentenced to do 12 months of probation, report and pay supervision fees, complete a drug and alcohol evaluation and risk reduction course, the victim impact count of 40 hours community service, and pay a fine in the amount of $671. Your Honor, this is Mr. Beadle's third revocation hearing. Um, first one was held on June 13th of 2023. The second one was held on February the 13th of 2024. And at that time, that hearing was reset to February the 27th of 2024, where Mr. Beadle did not appear. Um, at this time, Your Honor, uh, Mr. Beal still has not spent about the $671 on a fine. 40 hours of community service has not been completed. The risk reduction course, drug and alcohol evaluation, nor the victim impact panel has been completed. At this time, Your Honor, it's 30, 80 days remaining left on this particular case. Because of this, this is Mr. Beal's third revocation hearing. Probation respectfully asks that 30 days be revoked and the balance be Suspended. All right. Um, Mr. McLean? Uh, Your Honor, if that were uh, something closer to a week, uh, that's probably uh, enough, su enough time, sufficient time for him to reflect upon uh, this matter. Instead of the 30. I'm inclined to do just revoke the 80 days and give him credit for time served. No, no, nothing suspended. Uh, that's where I'm going, Mr. McLean, unless you have something to add. Uh, well, Your Honor, um, let's see. Uh, he is going to be taking an FBIP class as soon as he... Uh, Pleads on the other case. He has job interviews as a custodian to do maintenance. He's capable uh, and skilled at landscaping as well. He's going to be working pretty hard. And uh, the longer he stays in jail before he gets to that, of course, he will be uh, at a disadvantage. Spring is on and, and a lot of this landscaping jobs are going to be taken up right away. Um, but he would like just just a chance at that, Your Honor. Your Honor, if I may, please. Ms. Barnes, yes, sir. He's been um, in custody Honor. for 11 days, just FYI. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, Mr. Beadle has given, has shown probation that um, he's not willing to comply with any of the court's orders um, by missing those three revocation hearings. At this particular time, probation does not feel that Mr. Beadle's 
as a good candidate for probation at this particular moment. We've given Mr. Biddles um, three opportunities to comply with the initial orders of the court from um, um, from his first case. And again, he has not completed any of the conditions or made any attempts to complete any of the conditions. That's, uh, and again, that will be our um, insight for Mr. Beatles moving forward. Now. On the probation revocation matter, the court is going to revoke his probation. This is going to be recorded as a probation violation. It's going to be revoking 80, um, he's got 80 days remainder. He will serve the 80 days given credit for the 11 days, after which then this case will be closed out. Mr. Barnes says nothing uh, suspended. Is re revoke probation to serve out the remainder of the 80 days credit for times served 11 days. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, Mr. Um, McLean, that means your client has, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, he has about uh, 20, 27 days left. No, 26 more days left. Right, you are in 29, excuse me, 29 more days left to serve in light, the jail. In, in light of that, I think that the main case plea uh, resulting in 19 extra, if it ran concurrent, would not then uh, further burden him, and, and that would probably be a negotiated plea. All right. Uh, Mr. Beatles, I have revoked your probation for absolutely failing to comply with probation at all. Uh, and even to the point that even probation doesn't want you. They consider you to be not an appropriate candidate for probation. Um, in light of that, um, given that information, uh, would you like to consult with your client, with your attorney? with regards to whether you want to proceed with the plea on the battery family violence matter? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, I'm so. All right. Uh, Mr. McLean, um, looks like you are alone in courtroom two. I'm going to put courtroom two and jail court iPhone in a breakout. Oh, no, we have we have inmates against uh, over here by the wall, Your Honor. Oh, you do? Okay. I'm, then I'm, about to, I'm about to take them out, Your Honor. Okay. All right, uh, Miss Grace, if you can place courtroom two and jail court iPhone in a breakout. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other locations where we may address the case with Miss Vigiletti? All right, Mr. McLean, as soon as you're in your breakout, please make it as brief as possible because um, Miss Vigiletti, do you have any other matters to address? Anybody here in the courtroom with me? But I had a number of people who didn't need to be present today, so I could make some announcements while we're waiting. All right, whenever you're ready. Okay. Oh, but you can't because courtroom two is going to be in a breakout. Oh, okay. Well, well next, Unless... we have, next, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is I folks. Next for her, we have a probation number on the probation calendar, number seven. Number seven, okay. How about instead of putting courtroom two in a break, breakout room, I give Mr. McLean my phone and he can go in a breakout room. Okay, that would be great. To proceed? Well, uh, Mr. Well, it still doesn't matter because jail court, we're still, uh, Mr. Beatles is still there. Go ahead, deputy, bring the next case on jail court iPhone. Miss Vigiletti? Um, okay. Well, I'm, I'm supposed to join the, uh, the breakout session with. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead. Okay. All right, folks, we'll be in a brief recess until that breakout session is completed. Uh, Miss Grace, please make sure you tell them to make it as brief as possible. Thank you. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yana? Yes, sir. Yeah, um, I have to step away to attend another matter. Um, Ms. Allen is going to jump in in my place, okay, for the last two matters. We have April Jones and Elias Payne. Okay. Oh, it was me. a pleasure seeing you again. Thank you so much. And uh, take care. Thank you again.
<clears throat> yes, medical, we're still waiting for the um, courtroom two to come back on. So who do you have in medical? Rosen, Washington, position 10. Position 10, and that would be Mr. McLean's. Uh, if you could please hold, we have Mr. McLean's in the breakout room, and we will be with him shortly. All right, Ms. Grace, could you ask uh, Mr. McLean in the breakout session to wrap it up, and we're ready to resume. Will do. All right, Mr. Um, McLean in courtroom two. Is it if courtroom two could please start that video? I'm trying to get those on. Okay, you're you're on. Thank you. All right. So, Mr. McLean, uh, your client's going to be spending a little bit more extra time at the jail, um, and he's got a signature bond through pretrial on position five. What would your client like to do? Your Honor, he would like to plead guilty and make a negotiated plea this time. All right. Mr. Pierre Thomas, we're going to address position five. This is, again, Franklin Beatles, case number 24CR1245D, in which he's accused of battery, family violence, and battery against a female who is pregnant from March 16th, 2024. Uh, Mr. Beatles, uh, you've been advised of your right to remain silent. Your attorney is Mr. McLean. May I place you under oath for purposes of the plea? Yeah. The other right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Mr. Pierre Thomas, um, after you've heard uh, probation's recommendation, what would you like to recommend? You know, the recommendation from the state on count one battery family violence is for the defendant to serve 12 months on probation, to serve 60 days in custody, credit for the 11 days that he's already served. It looks like he was booked in on March 16th um, to uh, March 26th, which is today, for the balance to be probated, for him to have no further contact with Ms. Nikki Page, N-A-K-I-E-P-A-G-E, -E, for him to stay away from 1991 DeLo Drive, Atlanta, Georgia, for him to complete a family violence intervention program to submit to alcohol, drug, and drug evaluation and treatment as necessary for him to complete 40 hours of community <clears throat> service and for him to have no firearms. As it relates to count two, battery against a female who is pregnant, 
for him to serve 12 months on probation that is to be concurrent with count one. I do believe that Ms. Page is on, so if we could sound for her in accordance with Marcy's law, that'd be greatly appreciated. Our office has been fortunate enough to contact her, or be in contact with her. She does agree with the plea offer uh, per our last communications. Uh, and so if we could sound for her, but it, uh, if we could also get the defense to stipulate to venue, factual basis, and ID, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Nothing further to add from the state at this time. Mr. Um, McClayton, does your client stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, can I mute and just have a moment to consult something on my uh, email? Okay, go Thank ahead. Ms. Naki Page, if you'd like to contribute to the proceedings. Um, my name is Nakia, actually. And okay, <laughs> and um, I know this isn't normally him. I know he's been going through a lot lately, which isn't a reason or an excuse. But the no contact order is not going to work for us, given that we have a seven-year-old, a three-year-old, and I am currently pregnant with our third child. And the allegation of this incident apparently involves an alleged assault upon you in your current state. Yes, so ma'am. What are you asking the court? Um, I don't want the no contact order because my children are already missing him. All right. That's one factor to consider. Anything else? That's it. So the children are missing him. Yes. But not you. Is no, it's been 11 that? days. It's been 11 days and he, he's a active father, active uncle. He takes them to school. So I've been having to adjust my schedule and I have adjusted to so. So, so far as my children, they're asking me every day and I have no answer to give them. And uh, has Mr. Beatles legitimated the three children that you share with him? We have one that is legitimate and then I am pregnant with the second one that will be legitimate. What do you mean when you say legitimate? His name is on my, my second son's birth certificate. Okay, that is not legitimation in the eyes of the law. In the eyes of the law, Mr. Beatles would have to go to Superior Court, file a legitimation action, and get a court order to establish that he not only has the father of the three children, but that also he has rights to have visitation and custody over the three children, including child support. That's what legitimation means. The name on oh, the no. certificate does not give him any rights. Do you now understand what legitimation means? Yes, I still okay. need him to see my children. Understood. And the, what comes across very clearly is that he needs to have contact with the children, which is why I'm discussing legitimation. So is that something that we need to... That not I need you. To do? Not you. You don't have to do a thing. Oh. That's all Mr. Beatles. If he wants to see his kids who are missing it, he needs to file the action in Superior Court. And that way he has a court order that says that he can see his children on specific schedules. And that way they won't miss him and he won't miss them. Understood? All righty, I have to get back, so thanks. Okay. Thank you for your input. Mr. McLean, um, uh, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor, what I was checking on was I have an apology to make to Mr. Beatles. I had said that count two was gonna merge it simply says 12 months probation concurrent with count one. I had misread it, so I apologize to Mr. Beatles. It does not merge. It's just going to be probation running concurrent with no further special conditions. So it's kind of similar in effect, but it will be on his record, and I will have to write it down on the face sheet of what he is pleading guilty to. All right. Mr. Beatles, if you decide to move forward with this plea, you would be pleading guilty to battery family violence and battery against a female who is pregnant. Two very serious charges, even though they're misdemeanors, they're very serious because once they get on your record, it will be on your record if in the event anybody chooses to look at it. Furthermore, if you get arrested again for battery family violence, it will automatically be a felony charge. Given this information, okay. would you like to speak with your attorney and or would you like to move forward with the plea? Move forward with the plea. Mr. McLean? Yes, Your Honor. We'll move forward with the plea. All right. 
So do you so stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID? We do. For the purpose, right. yes. Mr. Beatles, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol recently? No, ma'am. And have you understood the proceedings so far? Yes, ma'am. Have you understood the discussion I had with uh, Ms. Page with regards to the issue of contact with your children and legitimation? Yes, ma'am. And do you understand that you would have to file a legitimation action in order to see your children? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, have Are you satisfied with your legal services? Yes, ma'am. And is anybody forcing you or inducing you to take a plea today? No, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty to battery, family violence, and battery against a female who is pregnant, as I've explained to you, that any subsequent arrest for a similar offense will automatically be a felony charge. Do you understand that? Yes, ma'am. Are you still willing and uh, to enter into this plea uh, voluntarily and knowingly? Yes, ma'am. Please understand that if you plead guilty today, you will not have an opportunity to a trial before a judge or a jury. You will not have the assistance of counsel to go back to court, to confront your accuser, challenge the evidence and witnesses brought before you, present your own defenses, arguments, and mitigating factors, and also have waive your right to have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to one count of battery family violence? Guilty. How do you plead to one count against a female who is pregnant? Guilty. Mr. Beatles, I'll accept your guilty plea. I'm about to sentence you. You've already heard from probation officer Jakai Barnes that you are not a good candidate on for probation. Do you understand that you're required to report to probation as the court directs? You're required to complete all these conditions. You're required to pay your probation fees. You're required to take classes. You're required to do community service. And if you don't do any of that, you will get a probation revocation as you've just observed in your other cases. What is your opinion on your ability to comply with probation this time? I'm going to do it. And if you don't? I want it on record, Mr. Beatles. I want it on record, Mr. Beatles. What happens if you don't? I'll be back here. No, no. On record, I want you to agree that if you violate probation one more time, that you are willing to serve out the rest of the year in prison, day for day, no two for one benefit. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know that he has the legal ability to agree. No, he's he yeah. already knows that he's already violated probation. He already knows that he failed to attend his probation revocation hearing twice. And we just had a probation revocation hearing, and he knows that if he violates probation, he would have to serve the rest of the time out in jail. Oh, so I mean, want no. him now to understand that before I sentence him to probation, he understands that if he violates probation one more time, that he agrees to go back to prison and serve out day for day the rest of the time in this case. No, here's here. I'm, I'm not trying to argue with the court, but your honor, some revocations vary in their severity of what caused the uh, violation. So he cannot agree in advance to the appropriate punishment because then this plea is not moving forward. Understood. We so, Mr. Beatles, it's up to you right now. We can put this on the jail jury calendar. That's fine. All right. I, I, yeah. Mr. Beals? I understand. Uh, your, right. he, your, uh, your attorney is saying that you're pleading not guilty and scheduling the case for trial. Yeah, he just can't yeah, agree, he can't agree to that last statement, Your Honor. That's that's the only problem. So let's just put this on the jail jury and, and uh move on. <laughs> Mr. Beatles, it's up to you. You have the final decision whether you want to move forward with the plea. I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be withdrawing as counsel. I will not participate in that. Okay. So I think the best thing to do is 
to put it on jail jury. If I'm in conflict with him, then he could get a conflict defender. That's fine. All right. Then in that case, I amend my request. Mr. Beatles, do you understand that if you violate the probation and I get your revocation hearing, I'm not inclined to reinstate your, your probation. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Is that satisfactory, Mr. McLean? Yes, Your Honor, it is. Because uh, your, your Honor has stated an inclination, which Your Honor certainly has the right to do. That's just that it has to be a fresh look if he does violate. I'll consider that. But right now, I'm not happy with the way he has responded to the prior court orders. Mr. Beatles, you are on notice. Uh, right now, on the battery family violence, the sentence is 12 months to serve 60 days, credit for time served 11 days. Um, balance probated. Um, you are to have no contact with Nakia Page. You are to stay 200 yards away from Nakia Page. You're not to communicate with her in any way, form, or manner. You are not to communicate with her through a phone, a computer, or anything to the effect with the exception, with one exception, once you get your legitimation court order to visit your children, then you may uh, communicate with her through a third party with regards to a transfer of children, unless the superior court says otherwise. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You are to stay away from 1991 the low drive. You're not to return to that location at all. After you've served out the additional jail time for this case and your probation revocation case, you will report to probation on the first available business day. Immediately after you're released, you're to report to probation on the first business day, which will be on Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday. And you must report before 3 p.m. You'll be okay. reporting to probation twice a month, not once a month, twice a month. Okay. While you are reporting to probation, you will complete a domestic violence intervention program. You must enroll in that program within 45 days of being released. Do you understand? And as soon yes, as you enrolled, you are to attend those classes every week for the next 24 weeks. Within 30 days of reporting to probation, you are to complete an alcohol and drug evaluation and submit yourself to any treatment. You're not to consume any alcohol, you're not to consume any illegal drugs, and you're not to possess any weapons and any firearms. You're also to complete 40 hours of community service, and you are to begin your community service within 30 days of being released with a completion of 10 hours per month. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. These are very strict uh, requirements, Mr. Beatles. Don't set yourself up to fail. I'm not. With regards to your conviction for battery against a female who is pregnant, your sentence is 12 months uh, probation concurrent with count one. Uh, you are to have no contact with the children you share with Nakia Page. You shall file a legitimation action with the appropriate superior court and get a superior court order to give you rights for visitation, joint custody, and child support. And it's up to superior court whether they will allow you to have contact with Ms. Page in order to transfer the children. Uh, Do you understand, Mr. Beatles? Yes, ma'am. I'm not happy putting you on probation because I agree with Officer Barnes, you're not a good candidate. So my challenge to you is to prove me wrong. Okay. Thank you. Can we go ahead and do position number 10, Mr. Dolson? 10 is ready for a negotiated plea if he's on a, a screen somewhere. Your Honor, number 13, uh, Caragbo, uh, is... I don't have him right now. I'm doing number 10. Okay. I have to get one at a right. time, sir. 13 will also be ready, but Your Honor, I will need a breakout with the two people at ACDC, Carolyn Lockett and Sharon Compton. That should be brief. Okay, thank you. Let's proceed with uh, Rasheem Dawson. Rasheem Dawson? Is that the individual at medical? Yes. 
Thank you. Rasheem Dawson is accused of possession and use of drug-related objects and loitering or prowling, case number 24CR1217E. Mr. Dawson, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney, and Mr. Michael McLean will be representing you. Could you please raise your right hand for purposes of being sworn for, for the plea? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes or no? Uh, yes. Yes, Please speak up. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Mr. Dawson uh, has been sworn. Mr. Pierre Thomas, what's the recommendation? Your Honor, the recommendation from the state as it relates to possession and use of drug-related objects, count one is 12 months probation uh, for him to submit to an alcohol and drug evaluation and treatment as necessary, for him to stay away from the Chevron gas station located at 4190 Roosevelt Highway. And as it relates to count two, loitering or prowling, uh, 12 months probation concurrent with count one. Nothing further to add from the state at this time. And if we can just get the defense to stipulate to venue factual bases and ID, that'd be greatly appreciated. Mr. McLean, do you so stipulate? We do so stipulate for the purpose of the plea, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Dawson, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol? No, ma'am. Have you understood the proceedings with regards to your case? Yes, ma'am. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Um, yes, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty to these charges, you would have to give up your constitutional right to a trial before a judge or a jury. You will not get the chance to have your attorney to help you confront your accuser, challenge the evidence brought before you, present any defenses or mitigating factors, and have the state carry its burden to prove the charges against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to one count of possession and use of a drug-related object and one count of loitering and prowling? Um, I, I don't remember what, 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 I don't remember having a drug object here. The charge is possession and use of a drug-related object and one count of loitering and prowling. Do you not remember those charges? Oh, no, ma'am, really? I don't. Well, um, I, I got locked up for a club picture. Really. She says All right. She says it appears, Mr. McLean, that your client does not remember these charges. Do you remember talking to your attorney, Mr. McLean? Yes, ma'am. What right. charges did you think you were facing? These are the ones from 2022, Your Honor. Yeah, so, that's April uh, 1st, 2022. About two years ago. This is the case you're here for. Let, all right, uh, Mr. Dawson, let me see one thing. So Mr. Dawson does have a um, theft by shoplifting charge from February, September 7th, 2022. He has a criminal trespass and loitering charges uh, from 2023, which were dismissed. And then you have an open case for burglary on September 7th, 2023. The case that you are dealing with is from 2022. Do you recall, Mr. Dawson? Yes, well, I do. I remember. Do you still want to proceed yeah. with this case? Oh, I, I was going. I was going to be not guilty, right? Because I, I didn't have it. It wasn't mine. Or nothing was mine. Well, okay. that would, that would be fine. A not guilty plea uh, is fine, and and we can uh, accommodate that. All right. Would you like to file a waiver of arraignment for position ten? Yes, Your Honor. That's what I'll do. All right. Mr. Dawson, uh, with regards to the charges of possession and use of drug-related objects and loitering and prowling from April 1st, 2022. Are you following me, sir? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, that's an accusation in which you were accused of being at, um, hang on, the accusation doesn't list the address, so let me go ahead to the warrant. 
just to make sure that you understand what you're being accused of. And Your Honor, if I could just point out to the court that I believe that there's an order in the system finding him not competent to stay in trial. Is this a competency issue? When, when did that come up? One moment. Not in the current case. Position number 10, is it in his other case? It looks like it's in the notes of the, the burglary case. 24 SC 000325 on the jailing booking screen. Okay, Mr. McLean, uh, if that, there's such an order, I can't deem right. your client competent to enter this right. plea. That would be very relevant to uh, even this matter, Your Honor, it's a 24 SC case. So I will get with whoever is assigned to represent him there and uh, have them take a look at that as well okay. and give some advice. I'm going to reset this case to. Uh, April 2nd, no, no, it has to be uh, April 4th, sorry. April 4th at um, 11 a.m. Pending an outcome from your discussions with um, Mr. Dawson or if you have a social worker visit. Right. Okay, Mr. Dawson. We will see you next Thursday at 11 a.m. Your attorney will be speaking with you. Do you understand, sir? Oh. Mr. Dawson, your attorney will speak with you. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you, sir. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. This is good afternoon. This is ACDC Officer Milton. If it's possible, I'd like to do position 38, Xavier Thompson, and so the officer can take him back for me. And then I, all I have left is the females. Okay. Jail court iPhone, I'll be right with you. I'm right here because my battery is dying. Battery oh, is Lord. Okay, go, ahead. go ahead, Your Honor. <laughs> For your Christmas gift, I'm buying you a battery pack and a charger, officer. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I know. Go, go ahead and do jail phone um, iPhone, Your Honor. 24CR1290. Do I uh, jail court iPhone? Okay, jail court iPhone. Who do you have? I have on the probation calendar on position number seven. Okay, position number seven. I have state versus Elias Payne, uh, who was convicted of theft by shoplifting 23 CR 5169 F. Um, Mr. Payne, you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney, and representing you is Miss Olivia Vigiletti. Um, do we have? Okay, this is the only case on the revocation calendar. Uh, Mrs. Allen, yes, you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you, Miss Grace. Could you mute medical, please? Yeah. Good on that conference. Miss Grace, could you? Thank you. All right, Miss Allen, what was the disposition in Mr. Payne's case and why are you seeking a revocation? Okay, Mr. Payne was sentenced to probation September the 7th, 2023 for the charge of shoplifting. He was required to report for 12 months, stay away from Walmart and complete a theft court. As of today, the defendant has failed to report to our office. He has failed to provide documentation of completing the um, shoplifting course. And originally we had a I sent an email out to the public defenders saying that this defendant case, um, the recommendations was for him to be time served. But because of the amount of time that is remaining on the case, it's 213 days remaining. Probation recommends that this defendant be allowed to continue on probation to complete that theft course. Ms. Vigiletti? Yes, Judge. I spoke with Mr. Payne yesterday. He frankly got quite sick when he was released from jail and then started a new job and just forgot to report. He was quite embarrassed when he told me that yesterday. Um, he is working. He's very happy to be put back on probation. We talked about it yesterday. He knows he needs to complete the anti-theft course. He knows he needs to report. I think he'll do quite well. Um, I don't have a, a great reason, but I will say that's the first thing he said to me is that this is not a great reason. I just forgot. Um, about the probation requirements. So in light of all the time left, I think um, putting him back on probation 
he's very aware of the of the requirements. Um, I think he'll be successful. Was he arrested on any other outstanding charges or just the probation violation? No, he's got a hold as well. No, he didn't have a hold. Sorry, no, disregard that. He doesn't have a hold. This he was arrested on the probation warrant. <laughs> and he's been in custody for 12 days because he forgot. So if he has 213 days left, I can have him serve out the rest of the 105 days left at jail so that it will improve his memory. Would that no help? Bail. No bail. No? No bail. It's only 100, and, and this will do wonders for your memory. No ma'am. I, I I had fell ill. I had a flu for um for about a week and a half after I got out of jail. And you forgot that you've been convicted and you need to report to probation? That is not an acceptable excuse. Yes. I'm going to accept the state's recommendation. <clears throat> this will be recorded as a probation violation um, and have him continue on probation. He yes. must report to probation on Thursday, this Thursday. Yes, ma'am. And probation office is located at 132 Mitchell Street in downtown Atlanta, and he must report in person before 3 p.m. Thereafter, he must report uh, every month until the rest of the 213 days are completed. He must be up to date with his probation fees within 60 days of being released. He must enroll in the anti-theft class within 30 days of being released. If he fails to enroll in the anti-theft class within 30 days, um, please issue another probation warrant for Mr. Payne to come back to jail. Um, he must also stay away from all Walmart stores, not just the one in question. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Judge. I'm telling you, staying at the jail does wonders for your memory. So... Not for everything else, but memory, A+. plus. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Payne. Best of luck. Thank you. Uh, Miss, and uh, that was Xavier on is position 38. Miss uh, Vigiletti, that's your client as well? Yes, this is Xavier Thompson. Okay. Uh, 24 CR 001290E. Mr. Xavier Thompson is accused of criminal trespass from September 3rd, 2023. Mr. Thompson, you have um, you have a right, this, this goes out to Mr. Thompson as well as to the young lady seated behind him. Uh, all of you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say in open court during these proceedings, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to represent you. For Mr. Thompson, his attorney will be Ms. Vigiletti. And this is going to be a negotiated plea. Mr. Thompson, may I place you under oath? Do you solemnly swear and affirm the, te the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, Mr. Rhodes, what's the recommendation for Mr. Thompson? Yes, Your Honor. As it relates to Mr. Thompson and on the... Sole count of criminal trespass, the recommendation is 12 months to serve 206 days and that he be given credit for 206 days already served and that the balance be suspended. Upon the suspension, Your Honor, we're asking that he be released to viewpoint health inpatient and that he complies with all his mental health medications and treatments and that he has no further violent contact with Katina and Jerry Singleton. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Vigiletti, do you see your client accept these terms and do you stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID? We do for the purposes of the plea. Yes, I, I talked to Mr. Thompson yesterday about being released to Viewpoint um, Healthcare Facility. He's really excited. I think it's going to be a great fit. Our social workers uh, got Mr. Thompson into that program. There is a hold on Mr. Thompson to be released specifically to that program. Our plan is to have our social worker, Jamal Harris, uh, once he receives um, medication, Mr. Thompson's medication from the jail, to also pick up Mr. Thompson to be the one to take him to that program. So, Judge, if you're willing, um, the, the jail has requested a 
release order that explains exactly how he's going to be released to Jamal Harris. Could I send that over to you today? Yes, please. That would be correct. You need to itemize each of these release conditions and um, because it needs to be initialed by the judge with regards to the medication release terms, the individual who will be uh, to whom Mr. Um, Thompson will be released, which will be Jamal Harris. So all these specific items must be itemized so that it can be initialed by the judge so that the jail understands that these are the specific conditions. Please, thank you. Okay, and one more question, Judge. Viewpoint requires that Mr. Thompson be released with his meds. We've started the process of getting a release on Mr. Thompson's meds, but we don't have an exact date of when they will be processed out of the jail. Can I put in the order that the release is effective upon release of his meds? I don't know what that means, release upon release of meds. Uh, so, you mean once he's furnished with the medication? Yes. So they have to release, they have, they, I guess it takes three to five days for the jail to release medication from their facility to our social workers. So I'm hesitant to put a date on there and then he's ready to go before the meds are ready to go because the viewpoint is requiring meds and Mr. Thompson come together. So, um, yeah, within... What did you say? Within 24 hours or 48 hours of being furnished with the medication? Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so the meds take three to five days. Okay. No, I mean, think about it. It's within 24 hours of Mr. Thompson being furnished. In other words, between 24 hours of the meds being delivered to him. Yes. So I don't want you to say within three to five days. So the jail would have to monitor that as soon as he's given the medication, okay. he has 24 hours to be released. Oh, or 48 hours. hours. All right. Okay. okay. That's what I'll put in the order. All right. Okay. And uh, on that, do you stipulate to the factual basis, venue, and ID? We do stipulate. I do just want to flag. Katina Singleton is the... I notice. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. Miss uh, Singleton, if you'd like to remove the hand signal, please, and then unmute. All right, oh, and then yeah. lower the device so I can see I, you. I'm sorry. Lower um, it further. I, yes, ma'am. All right, yes. Yes, Ms. Uh, Singleton. No, uh, I guess you got it. I was just going to see if I could help when it comes with the medication because he was still on our insurance. And the fa fact that um, I've got court order paperwork as his guardian, if I needed to get the medicine, um, I was just going to say uh, I would be inclined to do that, whatever it takes to help get him to his treatment. You okay. would need to contact the public defense attorney, Ms. Vigiletti. Yes, ma'am. And she can look into where the medication can come from outside to the jail, because otherwise it comes from within. I'll okay. Put, I'll put my contact information in the chat, okay? Okay. Thanks, Judge. Thank you, Ms. Singleton. All right. So, Mr. Thompson, um, have you understood everything that's going on? Yes, ma'am. And you understand that you're going to viewpoint after this? Yes, ma'am. All right, but it's not right away. You need to get your medication first before you can be released. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And you'll be released to Mr. Jamal Harris, who will then coordinate your transportation to viewpoint, where you will need to stay there in order to get the benefit of that facility and get better. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, in the meantime, uh, while I'm talking to you, have you consumed any medication or alcohol recently? Yes, ma'am. And even if there's consumption, have you been able to understand what's been going on and your conversations with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Is anyone forcing you to plead guilty to the charge of criminal trespass today? No, ma'am. And are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Please understand that if you decide to plead guilty today, that you will not get a chance to have a trial in front of a judge or a jury. You will not get a chance to go back to court, face your accuser, challenge the witnesses and the evidence that may be brought against you, have your attorney help you so that you can present legal defenses and arguments and uh, information that you want the jury to hear. And you will also have to waive your right to have the state carry is burden to prove the charge against you beyond a reasonable doubt. Has your attorney explained these rights to you? 
Yes, ma'am. And are you willing to give up these rights today? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to one count of criminal trespass? Guilty. Your sentence is 12 months to serve 206 days, credit for time served 206 days. Your jail time is concluded. The balance is suspended. You are to be released to Viewpoint Health inpatient in accordance with the release order that will be issued by the court. While you are at Viewpoint Health inpatient, you shall remain at the facility until you are discharged by the facility. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You are to comply with all the treatment and medications that are recommended by the doctors and the nurses at the facility. You are to have no violent contact with Katina and Jerry Singleton. In other words, you cannot have any arguments and any physical fights with Katina and Jerry Singleton. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. If you violate these conditions, new charges will be pressed against you and you will be back in jail. Yes, ma'am. Understood? Yes, ma'am. All right, that concludes your plea. Please submit the release order, Ms. Vigiletti, to Ms. Grace. Yes, Judge. Ms. Strong. Um, <clears throat> Ms. Strong, Ms. Vigiletti, please. Oh, sorry. Please yes, submit to Ms. Strong. Thank you. Sorry about that, Ms. Strong. Okay. Uh, medical, who do we have, please? Position number 13. Carbo. Okay. Um, that Mr. Uh, McLean? Okay. Yes, Mr. Carbo is 13, Your Honor. Okay. This is Nathaniel Carbo, case 24CR 1119J. Mr. Carbo, my name is Judge Lal. Please remember that you have a right to remain silent. Anything you say about your case, your statements can and will be used against you. You have a right to an attorney if you cannot afford one. Mr. Michael McLean will be your appointed counsel. And with regards to this case, uh, this is going to be a negotiated or non-negotiated plea, Mr. McLean. Uh, your Honor, I, I, let me let me consult that. Thirteen non-negotiated, Your Honor. All right. Uh, Mr. Carbo is accused of criminal trespass, public indecency, and disorderly conduct. Uh, Mr. Carbo. Um, this is going to be a non-negotiated plea, which means that if you decide, before you decide, before you decide to plead guilty, the prosecution is first going to give me their recommendation and you must listen to it very carefully. Then your attorney is going to give me a recommendation and you must listen to that also very carefully. I will decide which recommendation I will accept and I will let you know so you can decide whether you want to still plead guilty or whether you want to have a trial. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, uh, I have both Mr. Rhodes and Mr. Pierre Thomas. Either one of you can chime in. I'll, I'll do the case, Your Honor. All right, go ahead. If we could, if we could hear from Madam Pretrial as to really say the history, we have the history, but it's quite extensive and we'd like the, the court to have the, the luxury of hearing it. Uh, Ms. Tyson, uh, how many cycles does he have? And I really just need it for the last five years. He has 26 cycles uh, beginning in 2013. And you said the last five years, Your Honor? Yeah, thereabouts, yeah. His last arrest was by MARTA Police Department, June 29th of 2023. And that was for possession of cocaine and possession. I'm sorry, I apologize. 1882. Possession and use of drug related office. That case was dismissed. It's like September of 2023. Mm -hmm. He does have a felony conviction out of Fulton County for willful obstruction of law enforcement officer by use of threats or violence and criminal trespass. Disposition date on that case is February of 2023. And he received 12 months probation on that case, Your Honor. And then it, for the felony, it says indeterminate seven months. It's all, it's all the information it says. Let's see. And then he does have a given false name, address, a birth date from 2019. So that's all within the last five years, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah, you know, our records indicate that he's a multi-state offender. He has 26, 27 cycles in Georgia alone, 21 in Mass, uh, Massachusetts and one in New York. We, we indicate that he has a 2022 conviction for public indecency, trespassing and possession of drug related objects out of 2022, which is fairly recent. And he has that obstruction out of 2023, which is recent as well. Another terroristic threat, simple assault and uh, trespass in addition to other charges out of 2022. And again, giving false name 2019, which would be in the five-year period, Your Honor, and a slew of arrests. But the, the, what I just read to you were convictions. We believe that the offer that was given by the state was um, more than reasonable, uh, as it, I, I believe it's only 60 days to serve. I, I will spare the court of the, of the facts of the case, given the sensitive nature of it. Uh, I do believe that Your Honor uh, has probably likely read over the facts. Uh, the recommendation from the state, Your Honor, is a is twelve months probation for him to serve sixty days in custody for him to, to for him to get credit for the eighteen days that he's already served. Uh, of course, you know, the jail gives two for one or is likely to give two for one. Looks like he was booked in on March 9th, 2024 for that balance to be probated for him to have a stay away from 135 Andrew Young, which is the Waffle House, which is the, pu the public location, Your Honor. As it relates to count two, 12 months probation, that is to be concurrent with count one for him to have an SDET. Uh, and for count three, uh, 12 months probation to be concurrent with count one as well. So as again, Your Honor, I believe that the recommendation given from the state was more than reasonable. Nothing further to add. Mr. Pierre Thomas, I'm sure the state may also be aware of this. In addition to the facts, I've also read his, at least his last few dispositions. He's always been time served. In addition to that, he's been residentially challenged. Um, I don't know whether probation is going to work out for him or whether he financially qualifies for an SDET. So I don't know if I'm voicing Mr. McLean's uh, concerns, but I'll hear from Mr. McLean. Uh, actually, uh, Your Honor, that's exactly right. I was concerned that the SDET, uh, they're expensive. Back before COVID, they were $1,500. I hear it's better now uh, with some shopping, but even if it's $120 or $200, there's really no realistic way this person is ever going to get an SDET paid for. And that, that was the concern on the non negotiator And what was the, um, Mr. McLean? So it's the SDET, but you don't have a problem with the additional jail time? He didn't have a, a 12 additional de jail days. He didn't have a problem with that. So I chose not to argue with him about that. Okay. Um, Mr. Pierre Thomas, any comment on the um, requirement for count two? We would leave it to the discretion of the court. This, the state would just like to go on record as requesting that as the state has recognized that there is a, the potential of an issue there. I don't know if Mr. Uh, Carbo will be able to report to probation. Mr. McLean, do you have a good time, good address for him? Uh, let me... I'm looking at his cases, it's been residentially challenged for... Every time. Chronically, yes. Your Honor, he uh, is able to get over to 10 Park Place occasionally to get some, uh, some meds, but as far as phone numbers, addresses, uh, under a bridge, no, there's there's not there's not good facts there on on uh, ability to have stable housing. Unfortunately, it's it's a pathetic situation. All right. Um, Mr. Um, Pierre Thomas, I'm going to accept your recommendation. I'm going to dispense with the SDET, and I'm going to put Mr. Carbo on non-reporting probation um, because if he gets arrested again, then the state has an opportunity to seek a revocation of his probation in order to serve out the rest of the jail time. Understood, Your Honor. All right. Thanks. Mr. Carbo, I'm sorry, Mr. McLean, do you okay. have any comment on that? Say thank you, Your Honor. That, uh, that is quite suitable. Sometimes there's no clean. All right. Uh, medical, could you unmute, please? 
Yes, thank you. Mr. Carbo, uh, the recommendation, if you decide to plead guilty to these three charges, is that you will have to serve an additional 12 days at the Fulton County Jail. And then after that, you would have to uh, be on non-reporting probation, which means that you are on probation, but you don't have to report. Okay. Do you understand what that means? Yes, ma'am. But if you get arrested again, you can be brought back to jail and serve out the rest of the year in prison. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you also you can also cannot return to the Waffle House. You're young. You have to stay 200 yards away. And you must make sure that you remain clothed at all times that you are in public. Yes, ma'am. Do you know what that means? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, Mr. McLean, do you stipulate to the factual basis venue and ID? For the purposes of the plea, we certainly do. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Carbo, have you consumed any medicine or alcohol recently? Yes, ma'am. You can did you consume? Excuse me. Okay. Okay. If you don't listen to the question and answer it correctly, then I'm going to reset your case. Yes, ma'am. Schedule for trial. Yes, ma'am. So now I'm going to ask you a question and you need to listen to it very carefully. If you're not listening, then I cannot move forward with this case. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Carbo, have you consumed, have you eaten any medication or drank any alcohol recently? Yes, ma'am. When did you, what did you eat? I ate my, 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 my lunch. Okay. Mr. Carbo, have you, have you eaten any medicine? Did I take my medication? Yes. Yes, I did. When? This, this afternoon. Okay. Did you drink any alcohol? No, I didn't. Okay. Are you able to pay attention and listen to my questions? Yes, ma'am. Are you able to understand what's going on? Yes, ma'am. Are you satisfied with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Is anybody forcing you to plead guilty today? No, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty, you will not have a trial. Are you okay with that? Yes, ma'am. You won't be able to go into a court and confront your accuser. Are you okay with that? Yes, ma'am. And are you okay with going forward with the state not having to prove its case against you beyond a reasonable doubt? Are you okay with that? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to a criminal trespass at Waffle House? Guilty. How do you plead to public indecency? Guilty. How do you plead to disorderly conduct? Guilty. I'll accept your guilty plea. Your sentence is 12 months to serve 60 days. Credit for time served 18 days. You have 12 more days to serve at the jail. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. How many more days do you have to be at the jail? 12. So after that, you will be on probation, but it will be non-reporting. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. You are to stay away from the Waffle House at 135 Andrew Young Road, Boulevard. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. And at all times when you're out in public, you are to remain dressed and fully clothed. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Count two and count three will be a uh, concurrent to count one. All right. Thank you, Mr. Carbo. Good luck. Okay, Your Honor, are we finished with 901 Rice Street? Well, I'll find out. Mr. McLean, uh, I think so. Okay, think, nobody's chimed so. in. All right, ACDC, who do we have next? Okay. Um, let's go with um, Shanice. Welcome. Shanice, think, welcome. Yeah. She is position 43 and 44. Here we go. Uh, Mr. McLean. 
Yes. Do you still need to talk to position nine, Miss Compton? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm going to call you now at 2391. Okay. I mean, 92. I'm 92. Okay, thank you. Miss Vigiletti? Thank you. We have your client, Shanice. Welcome. Case number 22 CR 6880E in which she was accused of giving false information to an officer, two counts of giving him false information. And she's got a bench warrant for um, failure to appear on March 17th, 2024. So, um, Miss, welcome. You've been uh, advised of your right to remain silent. Your attorney is Miss Vigiletti. And this is going to be a negotiated plea. Would that be correct? Yes, Judge. All right. Ms. Welcome, please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you provide will be the truth to the best of your knowledge? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rhodes, what's the recommendation for count one? Yes, Your Honor, as it relates to count one, giving false information to law enforcement officers, it is a time served recommendation of 34 days to serve. Our records indicate that Ms. Welcome has already served 17 days, so if given two for one, that would satisfy that time, sir, please. And Thanks. Sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> Good. You, and as you already indicated, I believe that count two would merge with count one. Oh, thank you. Sorry, sometimes my brain is outpacing my mouth, so appreciate it. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, was it the other way around? Anyways, uh, Ms. Uh, Vigiletti, do you stipulate to the factual basis venue and ID? We do, for the purposes of the plea. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Welcome, have you consumed any medication or alcohol? No, ma'am. And have you understood the uh, what's been going on in your case? Yes, ma'am. If you decide to plead guilty to the charge of giving false information, you would have to give up your constitutional right to a trial. You will not be able to go back to court, challenge this charge in a court of law, confront your accuser, and have the state carry its burden to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. Are you prepared to give up these rights? Yes, ma'am. And are you satisfied with your attorney services? Yes, ma'am. How do you plead to one count of giving false information to an officer? Guilty. Your sentence is uh, 34 days. Credit for time served 17 days. Your jail time is concluded. And um, count two will merge with count one. If you have no other holds, you should be released within 24 hours. Thank you. All right. Take care. And your bench warrant will be null pros. In other words, there's nothing holding you at the jail. We will provide that order, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, the next case that doesn't need a breakout. Okay. I believe, Ms. Vigiletti, uh, you only had two, right? Yes, ma'am. So everybody else is for... Um, Attorney McLean. All right. Um, Mr. McLean, if you want to be in courtroom two, we can put He's you on in the a breakout phone. with ACDC. He, okay. He, He's the on the phone with them, Your Honor. Oh, they are? Okay. Yes. Then um, we'll be back when he's... Well, go ahead and mute your screen, and Miss Vigiletti and I will go over the calendar. Sounds good, Judge. I'll grab my laptop. Oh. Uh, Ms. Vigiletti, you can do it from courtroom two, if that's okay. Okay. All right. We are proceeding with the probation revocation calendar. Uh, position number one is uh, probations revoked. Sorry, one and two, probations revoked. Uh, position number two, Clyde Hudson is continued on probation, which is three and four. Uh, position five, April Jones was not addressed. I believe she's at ACDC. I believe they're speaking. Okay, ACDC. Okay, so that's coming up next. Uh, position seven is continued on probation. Position eight is commuted to time served. That's eight and nine. And 10 and 11, it was revoking the balance commuted to uh, the 13 days left. I believe okay. it's 25 days left. Oh, 25 days left. Yes. Um, mm. Yes, you're correct. Credit for the 13 days he was in jail. Sorry about that. No problem. Okay. 
So on probation, we have one more case with ACDC. On the SAP calendar, position one was a plea. Position two is null cross. Position three was a plea. Position four was a plea. Position five is a plea. Position six, uh, Anthony Brown is a plea. No, sorry. Was Anthony Brown a plea? I believe Mr. Brown was uh, intending to plead not guilty today, and I don't believe he was yeah. brought. I believe that Mr. McLean was going to waive his presence. I, believe I, do, I don't know about position six, so I'll wait for Mr. McLean. Do you, well, position six. Okay, Mr. McLean, uh, Ms. Strong, Mr. McLean will file a waiver of arraignment, and this case is further notice for trial for Anthony Brown. They okay. Uh, position seven um, is uh, a waiver of arraignment and further notice for trial. Same announcement for position eight. Position nine, Sharon Compton. I believe she's the other woman at ACDC. Okay, the other person at ACDC? Okay. All right. Position number nine, uh, Rasheem Dawson is re reset to April 4th at 11 a.m. competency calendar. Uh, position 11 is a, 11 is a, um, it's going to be a waiver of arraignment and uh, further notice for trial. That's position uh, 11. All right, please advise Mr. McLean for the waivers. Uh, position 12 is a waiver of arraignment and further notice for trial. And he was provided a $5,000 signature bond through the jail with a release to, I believe, Houston County. Yep. <clears throat> position 13 was a plea. 14, uh, Marilyn Lockett. 14 and 15. Also okay. That was 14 and 15. Okay. All right. Position 16, uh, Leon Lott is released. Position 16 was released, so he's further noticed for trial. Position 17, Tanisha Mahaki or uh, Mahachi is going to be reset. Mm -hmm. um, do we, are we doing a one week reset? I'm sorry, this is Mr. McLean's client. I wasn't uh, present okay. today. So position 17, we need, a, well, let me right now reset it one week to April 2nd, SAP calendar, subject to Mr. McLean asking otherwise. Of course you can. All right. Position 18, uh, McCormick is a waiver arraignment and further notice for trial. Same announcement for position 19, 20, and 21. He yeah. was, his bond was modified accordingly. Uh, position 22, more is a plea. Position 23 and 24 and 25. 26 and 27, uh, that's going to be a waiver of arraignments and further notice for trial. Bonds were modified accordingly. Position 28, uh, Victor Payton, Ms. Uh, Vigiletti. Uh, yes, the DA transfer that uh, Ms. Bach requested was approved. So that case is now in Superior Court. So position 28 is transferred to Superior Court. Uh, position 29, Monty Price. Yes, Judge. Um, the sentence recommended by um, the solicitor's office, which makes total sense, does depend on a transfer to state prison um, on another case. They, they basically recommended that the sentence be suspended upon transfer to state prison. Um, Mr. Price has moved to withdraw his plea on the case that would send him to state prison, there's going to be hearing on it tomorrow. So that's why I'm requesting a reset of one week just to give us a chance to figure out is he actually moving to state prison before you know we pin another sentence on his transfer to that prison. Okay. 
Position 29 is reset, reset to April 2nd. Uh, position 13, Darren Pyatt. And uh, that Listen. is the next situation where the, the transfer was approved. So that's been the Superior Court. Position 30 is transferred to Superior Court. Uh, 31 and 32, Mr. Germain Reynolds was released. So that's a further notice for trial. Position 33 and 34, is this going to be a waiver of arraignment? Yes, I did um, submit a waiver of presence and arraignment yesterday. I am wondering, this case is a misdemeanor case um, that is related to a felony charge. And right now they're being processed separately, but it's the same complaining witness in both cases. I'm wondering if it's possible for this case to be paired with the accompanying felony charge of terroristic threats against the owner of the gas station, yeah. where he's also, you know, this misdemeanor, he's being accused of criminal trespass there. Mr. Pierre Thomas, is the state intending to consolidate this misdemeanor case with his open felony matter? I I didn't get any inclination of that, Judge, but I can I can look into that. Uh, okay. Well, the request has been made. The uh, solicitor's office is on notice as a request to consolidate by the PD's office. And this case presently is further notice for trial pending a possible consolidation. Mr. Rose, I'll send it to you in writing to my understanding of how these are. Because I didn't understand that they were related at first either. I appreciate that. I'll, I'll make sure that's, we'll get that done. Okay. So that's uh, position 33 and 34, pending uh, further notice for trial pending a possible consolidation. 35, Ruben St. Hilaire is, um, has it been transferred? My understanding that the transfer was requested as of yesterday, I didn't see anything about it being transferred yet. I will say this misdemeanor very similarly is related to his felony burglary. So even they are, they are one case. Sorry about that. And I'm checking now to see if it has been accepted. I know it was sent. So if I can come back to that as I checked on to see if it's been accepted. Okay, we'll come back to 35. Uh, moving on to 36, Quintavious Shivers, and that would, he was released. So that's further notice for trial. Uh, same announcement for uh, position 37, released further notice for trial. 38, Xavier Thompson was a plea with a release to viewpoint subject to the release order that's uh, to be signed. Uh, position um, 39 and 40, Irvin Turner has been released. So both cases are further notice for trial. Position 41, Quentin, or oh, excuse me, Quentin Turner. Uh, that's another matter that... Um, Oh, I see the order for transfer to Superior Court has been signed. So that's going to be uh, transferred to Superior Court. That's for Quentin Turner. Position 42, Don Watts was a plea. 43 was a plea. 44 will be null cross. Uh, 45 was a plea. 46 was a plea. And 47 was a plea. So, Ms. Vigiletti, we are going to go back to position 35 for your cases. $300. And for Mr. McLean, we're going to go back to position 6, 11, and 17 for his announcements. And then he's going to address positions 8, 14, and 15 at ACDC. All right, so um, we'll just be in recess until Mr. McLean is ready to move forward. Thank you. Any questions, Ms. Vigiletti? Uh, no, that sounds great. Thank you. Thank you.
Det kunne give mig stand til det, for det kunne give mig noget bedre. Hvad vil du do? Hvad er din adgang? Okay, så hvad er din adgang? Vi tjekker det lidt her. Okay. 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 Right. The thing is, the PO box, you know, it's not been my experience that they accept the PO. That's a good way to get your mail. I love that. But uh, it's in the first office, and the judge will feel about uh, people who are only. All right, is Mr. McLean ready? Your Honor, we're going to start with the probation um, okay. position five and six, April Jones. Thank you. This is Miss April Jones. Her case number is 22 CR 5045 C, in which she was convicted of simple battery and all public drunk and all criminal trespass. 
She's got a probation revocation matter, 24 PV 440. Ms. Jones, you've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Mr. McLean. Oh. Ms. Allen, you've already been sworn. Uh, what is the uh, disposition that Ms. Jones received and what's the reason for the revocation? Your Honor, Ms. Jones was required to report to probation for 12 months, um, complete anger management classes, and pay probation supervision fees. As of today, the defendant has failed to prov uh, provide documentation of anger management. She has failed to report to our office. It's 43 days remaining on her case. At this time, probation recommends this defendant be allowed to continue on probation to complete a two-day anger management course. Mr. McLean? Your Honor, that would be a good save. All right. Um, this court will um, record this as a probation violation. Ms. Jones, you have 43 days left on probation. You must report to probation every week beginning this uh, Thursday. Do you understand? Every week. It's once a week. And while you are reporting to probation, you will enroll in a two-day anger management program, and you must enroll within 15 days of being released. And if you fail to enroll and complete the two-day anger awareness program, we'll just have to have you serve out the rest of the time in jail. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. All right. So this is a weekly report. First day to report is this Thursday, March um, 28th, before 3 p.m. at 132 Mitchell Street, and report every week thereafter, uh, according to the schedule set by probation. Thank you. Oh, you want to make a comment to her? Ms. Jones, that's going to be roughly six reportings that you're going to do. Okay? Every, once a week. Okay. She needs to address. Yeah, I need the address. I don't have the address. 132 Mitchell Street in downtown Atlanta. 122 Mitchell Street. The first report date is this Thursday, March 28th, 2024, before 3 p.m. And must enroll in her two-day anger management class within 45 days from today. Ms. Allen, I think that completes the probation cases. Yes, Your Honor, it does. And also, um, Mr. McLean, can you make sure you all send over the signed petitions? Um, please try to do it before five. Will do. That's a message to me. I No, no, it's not. <laughs> I was waiting on the public defender's office. It wasn't you, okay. Judge. <laughs> Well, we're gonna figure out if we we're gonna figure out if we've got them printed out already, and we'll we'll get those. Uh, I'm gonna be over there in that uh, block. Okay, and, and then once I get it from you all, I'll send it over to the judge. But thank it you. wasn't your judge, Law. It no, wasn't. Thank you. you. Appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Next is position nine, Miss um, Compton. Yeah, I get the impression from talking to Miss Compton that she wishes to. Uh, do what is essentially a uh, negotiated plea or darn close to it. Okay. Uh, by the way, uh, Mr. McLean, do you know what's your announcement for position eight, Cordero Brown? Uh, let's see. Oh, did that's we, that's been a, no, no, yeah, that's before that. the notice for trials. No, no, it's not. Cordero Brown, did we further? Oh, was that his other case that's been further noticed for trial? Okay, that's yeah. fine. I got that. So, Miss Miss uh, Compton is position number nine. Okay. Right. Now, and Ms. she Compton, wants to plead not guilty? I believe she wants to plead guilty. I've told her her options are not guilty and make your bond or ask for a different bond. And the other option would be um, pleading guilty today. She, I, I think she's really leaning towards the latter. Okay. Well, Sharon Compton, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. Can you stop swaying, please? Thank you. Uh, your case number is 24CR1141B. 
and you have been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Mr. McLean. Mr. McLean is your attorney because he's going to explain to you the legal and factual terms of your case and give you his best professional uh, recommendation as to how you should proceed with the case. You are charged with three separate misdemeanor offenses of criminal trespass causing damage to property. If you decide to uh, accept his recommendation and plead not guilty, then the court will address uh, a request for a bond modification. There's no guarantee that you will get a bond modification, but the court is still prepared to listen to uh, his reasons on why your bond should be modified. On the other hand, if you decide that you want to plead guilty, then you will be placed on probation where you will be required to pay a $100 restitution and report to probation every month and stay away from the location and Highland Avenue. Uh, can you, uh, would you like time to speak with your attorney again or would you like to make a decision right now? I'll just wait one more time. I'm sorry? I didn't understand. You want to speak what? I'll just wait one more time. What did she say, Deputy Milton? She said she would like to speak to her attorney one more time. But okay. the thing is that I am on a time, I'm a time crunch. I still have to do my first appearance um, felony and I have to do a two o'clock. Yeah. Her case is going to be reset to this Thursday at on March 26th. Excuse me, March 28th. And uh, which time she will have more time to speak with her attorney and make a decision. Speak up. You run out to catch the phone. The next person coming up after this one is 14 and 15, Ms. Lockett. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Compton. Ms. Compton, you're done. Yeah, extra time. Yeah. Mr. McLean, uh, 14 and 15 is Marilyn Lockett. Uh, she's got a bench warrant in case 24 FTA 299. And she has an open case 23, excuse me, 22 CR 4630F in which she was accused of criminal trespass and obstruction of a law enforcement officer from July 18th, 2022. Ms. Uh, um, excuse me, Ms. Uh, Lockett, you've been advised of your right to remain silent and your attorney is Mr. Michael McLean. How are we proceeding, Mr. McLean? Your Honor, she's pleading not guilty to the uh, intentional FTA. She's pleading not guilty to the obstruction and trespass from 2022 as well. She's going to ask the court to consider giving her a signature bond, and she will explain the FTA. And uh, she tells me, Your Honor, that she has a stable mailing address, which is very good. She pays 90 something dollars for uh, every several months and checks her P.O. box darn uh, almost every day. Uh, she has a good P.O. box. And I tell her, well, you know, they really need to know where you are as well, but uh, uh, the mailing address is extremely important. And she doesn't, uh, she says she did not intentionally miss court on 316. I don't know what address is showing in Odyssey, but uh, she says the P.O. box will work. Is it, you know, we don't always see P.O. boxes uh, in our Odyssey, but uh, that is, that's something we're considering. Uh, she definitely feels that she is not guilty of the 2022 offense, however, and would like an opportunity to address that in front of the jury. Okay. Miss um, uh, Lockett, uh, court, excuse me, Miss Marilyn Lockett's address that we have is 1034 Washington Street, Apartment A in Atlanta, Georgia. Your Honor, that address is the ad when I went to get my ID and my driver's license updated. I told them that at that time I was homeless and I needed and I had a PO box. They said they couldn't use PO box, but they will continue to use that number until I get an address. I'm sorry. With whom did you have that conversation? Motor vehicle. Okay, motor vehicle is not the courthouse. I understand that, but I'm just trying to explain why that address appears. 
I know, but if that address wasn't working, you were required to come down to the courthouse and give your PO box address. I didn't know that. Well, unfortunately, you had to spend time in jail to learn that. You spent 11 days in jail to learn that. I know I've been working, waiting for my first appearance. I told I wasn't going to have one until yesterday when I talked to Ms. Davis. But what I'm trying to get to you, Ms. Lockett, is that you spent 11 days in jail over a simple mistake of simply updating your address with the court. I hope that is a lesson well learned because I don't care who you talk to, but if you change your address, you need to come down to the courthouse and give us your change of address in writing. Ma'am, that address, that P.O. box has been with me since I got But it. you've never let the courthouse know. I didn't know that I had to, ma'am. That ignorance cost you 11 days in jail. I understand. Okay, good. Um, Mr. McLean, would you like to file a waiver of arraignment or would you like me to arraign the case? Uh, I can do the waiver. I can do the waiver, Your Honor. We have. All right. Um, Mr. Pierre Thomas, any comment on the bond modification request? Your Honor, given the nature of the, the charges and the age of the case, the state would defer the, to the court. All right. On the obstruction of a law enforcement, and let me see, what's her current bond? Mr. Uh, McLean, do you have her current address? Uh, it is the P.O. box. I didn't ask her what the P.O. box was, but she is able to provide it to Deputy Milton. In Miss Lockett, you're a smart woman. Your bond is going to be amended to a $4,000 signature bond through the jail. You are to stay away from uh, 2 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. I guess that's the place where you went to get your ID. Do you understand? Yeah, okay. Two more the King Drive. Okay, I'll stay away from you. Today is Tuesday. I understand. By 5 p.m. tomorrow, you have to come down to the courthouse at 160 Prior Street and confirm your new mailing address in writing with the clerk's office. I want you to come down to the clerk's office to confirm your mailing address so that you will know exactly where to go if you ever change your address again. Today is Tuesday. You have to be in the clerk's office by tomorrow, 5 p.m. Or rather, 4.45. They don't want to wait for you till 5. We really should make it 4. 4.30. Do you understand, Ms. Lockett? Yes, I do. All right. Mr. McLean. Yes, Ms. Strong? This is two and two, correct? Um, she's got a bench warrant. And so she's, it's, yeah, I'm reinstating her signature bond on the original case. So, Mr. McLean, please make sure that the signature bond is reinstated. Got it. Right. And the, which is a $2,000 total signature bond. <clears throat> But the bench warrant, basic. I see what you mean. Yeah, it'll be a two and two. Yeah, two and two. Two and two signature bonds with the jail on each right. count. Yeah. Right, two and two. Yeah. Yes, Miss Lockett. Um, you said it's a $2,000 signature bond. What does that mean? It's a $4,000 signature bond through the jail. Sorry, not two. 4,000, what does that mean? That means you can sign up for your bond through the jail. And if you get arrested again, you'll be back in jail with a $4,000 cash bond or a surety bond. Thank you. That concludes your case. Thank you, Deputy Milton. All right, Mr. McLean, uh, we have on Miss Lockett position 14, that's in 15, that's a waiver of arraignment and further yep. notice for trials. Um, so that takes care of position 14 and 15. Probation position five and six are taken care of. I have a question on position six. Um, Anthony Brown, 
it's uh is it a waiver of arraignment and further notice for trial just to confirm yes your honor uh when i talked to him he, he said that he had max sharp and max was mr sharp was on the video earlier i noticed in chat he asked somebody is this person coming to the courtroom or not and they had replied to him no and so he said bye so he was satisfied with that uh, response and that's the same conversation I would have had with him if I hadn't been so busy I was going to get on chat and tell him hi Mr. Sharp Mr. Brown is not coming to the courtroom today so I'm sure they'll get together and uh, conclude their um, entry and their hiring and all that sort of good thing. So as far as you know Anthony Brown is represented by counsel Max Sharp. Not not yet on this case your honor not, not yet, yet. On this case, okay. but they'll, they'll figure it out. Okay, well, go ahead and file the waiver arraignment to Ms. Uh, Strong, please. Thank you. I shall, I shall do that. Thank you. Position 11, then the other question is, old Demetrius Harper, is that also going to be a waiver of arraignment and further notice for trial? Is that a call? Yes, I believe that is. I believe okay. that is it. right. And the last position was 17, uh, Tanisha, uh Mahakai or Mahaki, um, I've got it reset to April 2nd, SAP. Right. That's uh, that's suitable. April 2nd. Okay. I'll make a note of that. All right. Uh, I think, um, and then Miss Vigiletti on position 35. Did we get an answer to that question? Um, I know the DA transfer was requested. I'm just not sure if it was accepted. Do you know, Mr. Rhodes? So they they have not we sent the paperwork over. I I sent email the DA's office for the acceptance and called while I was on hold. I didn't get them. If we could just reset this one. I don't know if, if you would further really? notice it to our reset. It. We we should have it clarified by them. But it was sent to the represent the representatives in the DA's office for them to actually accept it as a transfer. Okay, it's going to be reset to April second. Oh, right. At 9 a.m. I apologize. Who was this? Uh, position 35, Ruben St. Hilaire. Uh, it's reset to April 2nd, uh, SAP pending a uh, Superior Court transfer. All right. I think I've covered all the cases I had questions in. Ms. Strong, do you have any questions about any of the cases? No, ma'am. All right. Ms. Vigiletti, Mr. McLean, we good? We're good. Oh, so, yes, Judge. All, all right, right, everyone. Thank you again. And that concludes the SAP. And we all will resume with the C calendar at two. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What happened with Sherry?